It's time for Twig This Week in Google. Jeff's here, Ant's here, Stacy's here. We're going to talk about, Stacy especially, the new smart home cybersecurity label and, and what it will mean. We'll defend Lena Khan and her FTC despite a couple of notable losses. And then we'll talk a little bit about AI. What is synthetic data? And is it a good thing for AI? All of that and more coming up next on Twig. This show is brought to you by Cisco Meraki. Without a cloud-managed network, businesses inevitably fall behind. Experience the ease and efficiency of Meraki's single platform to elevate the place where your employees and customers come together. Cisco Meraki maximizes uptime and minimizes loss to digitally transform your organization. Meraki's intuitive interface, increased connectivity, and multi-site management keep your organization operating seamlessly and securely wherever you're team is. Let Cisco Meraki's 24-7 available support help your organization's remote, on-site, and hybrid teams always do their best work. Visit meraki.cisco.com slash twit. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twig. This Week in Google, episode 725, recorded Wednesday, July 19th, 2023. But Senator Trellis, This Week in Google is brought to you by ACI Learning. IT skills are outdated in about 18 months. You could launch or advance your career today with quality, affordable, entertaining training. Individuals use the code TWIT30 for 30% 30 off a standard or premium individual IT pro membership at go.acilearning.com slash twit. And by Brooke Lennon. Summer's in full swing. Brooke Linden's here to help you swap out that old warm winter stuff for easy breezy comfort with their award-winning sheets and home essentials. Visit brooklinden.com today and get $20 off plus free shipping on orders of $100 plus with the code TWIG. It's time for TWIG! Oh yeah, This Week in Google, the show where we cover all the latest news from the internet. Jeff Jarvis is here. He is our town night professor of journalistic innovation. Uh, he's the Leonard Town professor at the Craig Newmark <laughs> Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York. Hello, Jeff. Hello there. Hello You're coming there. out uh, in a week, I, right? I'm coming out. Yes, I'll be out. I'll be out uh, next Tuesday. I'm speaking at the Commonwealth Club. I'll be honest and humble about it. There aren't enough people buying tickets yet. So I want Twit Army has come out nicely to my talks in London and in Boston. Can Twit Twig Army come out to San Francisco on the night of the 25th? Well, next I know. Tuesday, 6 I know. PM. I can't because I have to do, do the uh, show, but. Lisa, yeah. Lisa, and uh, others from Twit will be there. That's so look so for her. Yeah, she bought tickets. And if uh, you go to uh, Bitly slash Here Jeff, and if you use the code Jarvis CWC, you get ten bucks off. Now there are online only tickets, so you don't have to be in the that Bay too. Area. That yeah. too, but you can also use the Jarvis CWC code and get ten bucks off that. So it's free. Oh, that's nice. So do no, it online if you're not in the Bay Area. But if you are in the Bay Area, Tuesday, July twenty fifth, go come. see. You can see please. Jeff and Lisa. Go say hi. Yes, yes. Be lots of people. A lot of my old friends will be there. It's very nice of them. Oh, that's great. My old friend Susan Murnett is bringing eight people. Oh, I follow her. Well, I know Susan oh, Murnett. Really? Yeah. yeah, you should have her I, on. I some used point. to She's follow her on Twitter. News pioneer. <laughs> Yeah, I think so she thank you invited me to speak to the Online News Association, I think. I think it was... Susan. Oh, she might have. Yeah. Uh, also with us, Mr. Ant Pruitt, manager, community guy, and uh, the beautiful club twit environs. He's going to be doing a uh, photo critique. Mm-hmm. In Club Twit, that's exciting. I hope you do this on a more on a regular basis. I would that's like to do idea. that as well. So yeah. yeah, join us coming up here soon at the beginning of August, and hopefully my description doesn't confuse anybody. I'm not just wanting to have coffee with people. You don't have to have it, coffee. It says to do coffee it. time, but it's based on uh, uh, coffee with your photography. So nice. The, the theme is coffee time. Get your camera, regardless of what camera you have. Go take some daggum pictures and let's do a critique, shall we? Friday, August 4th. Wait, are, 
Are we supposed to take pictures of our coffee? Are the uh, coffee themed <laughs> coffee, that's uh, coffee time. time. Everybody is so what, confused. What, what does coffee time mean to you? Put that in a photograph. That's all. I didn't think it'd be that difficult. That's your assignment. <laughs> the assignment is. Well, it sounds like maybe that it's coffee time with Ant. But it isn't coffee so, time with Ant. It is Simon is. Oh, let Ant. me go in here and rewrite this deck. <laughs> <thing. laughs> but, but, <laughs> and you just showed a picture of Ant's coffee time. Coffee time life. A minute ago in his comfortable chair outside. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if he had coffee. <laughs> Stacy's book but club is also coffee? coming up August thirty first. You That's have decided right. on a book. Yep. Translation state. What's that all about? We're reading Anne Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. It's been suggested. It's been a year and times. a half. Probably four Finally times. got this book in. And it didn't get the it didn't get the vote. Stacy Higginbotham, host at Stacy on IOT.com at Giga Stacy on the Twitter. Uh, and our IOT expert. And actually the first story is right up your alley. And I know you're ready to yes. talk about this. The uh, Biden administration has announced its new Smart Home Cybersecurity Label. It's the U.S. Cyber Trust Mark. Really? You're going to use you, Yeah, their, you could show Stacy's. You could show Stacy's, which I put in the rundown. Okay, I don't know. I put there you. How I dare put this you? Rundown. Their, their <laughs> headline was, Biden administration does a cybersecurity label for smart TVs, which I was like, I mean. How about this? According to Stacy on IoT, the White House there details we go. its IoT security label plan. So what is it and how do it work? This, yeah, this is the U.S. Cyber Trust Mark. They introduced the concept of doing this back in October, and the Biden administration is basically creating a voluntary program, kind of like the EPA's Energy Star thing. And if you see this on a product, and it won't be out till like 2024, but if you see this mark on a product, you can, you can oh, trust it. <laughs> this, this product has met cybersecurity standards. And you might be like, what standards, Stacy? And the answer is, we don't exactly know that, but. <laughs> <laughs> so they, it's your our article says they're leaning on a NIST document, the National Institutes of Standards and Time. Yes. So it's what is the it's NIST 8524 document? It's actually a really good document. So I this this came out in 2022. Y'all are like, Stacy, that's crazy. It's too much. It's 30 pages. It's not. Don't worry. What NIST has done basically is they took a deep dive into IoT and they were like, well, crap, IoT is really hard to secure for a couple reasons. One, you got hardware, software, cloud, all this stuff. You got an ecosystem of devices talking to each other. And then you've got devices that range from like really important things like medical devices all the way down to like, I used to have an egg counter, right? That counted my eggs and all of those Wait different minute. levels of- Timed your eggs or counted them? It was called the quirky egg counter. And it, did, did it count how many eggs thing. you have? It literally only existed to let me know how many eggs were in my fridge. It was <laughs> it was a fun thing that I got. <laughs> Wait, what? I've heard of an egg timer, but an egg counter it seems well, not it's just confusing like as coffee time. So useful oh, as gosh. all that. Anyway. Good. I hope so, it's yeah. secure. So, God bless it. Better be secure. <laughs> um, Don't want to let the Chinese works. know how many eggs you have. The, the oh server my. went down. But the point is, like, the that thing did not down. need, like... It went out of business. <laughs> <laughs> we no, can talk I, about how that do I too. count my eggs? <laughs> <laughs> not until they're hatched, young man. Oh, wow. Exactly. Wow. Is that a dozen? Anyway. Is it five? I don't know. Unbelievable. So that is that is an example of a device that you're like, eh, if Just, someone can see how many eggs I have, I don't care. Yeah, who cares? But if someone can see like my glu blood, blood glu glucose or maybe can well, hack my even, pacemaker, that's very different. Even yeah. more than that, it could be a gateway into your personal, into your network. So even if, it could be a you know, it's not merely network. that they could hack your egg counter. It's that they could then get into your network and right. do other bad things. That is true. All right. And that is why they're doing this. That is that is one of the big reasons why the Biden administration has come out with this labeling plan and everybody's on board. And by everybody, I do mean everybody. Like the CTA is on board, the CSA, which is doing the matter standard, is on board, Amazon, Google, Samsung, Best Buy, Logitech, like lots of companies are on board. Um, but the standards so far are really good. They're things like no default passwords, Yay. you're gonna need multi-factor authentication, encryption 
at rest on the device, encryption when it's going anyplace else, and then encryption where it's stored in the cloud. Nice. Um, there's a ton of, there's actually a really interesting thing that we don't see on a lot of IoT devices, which is data logging. They want to, well, NIST calls, let me rephrase this, NIST calls for things like data logging and monitoring. So manufacturers and consumers should be able to see what's happening, who are their devices are communicating with, how often they're communicating, logging changes to the systems. So you can read the document, you can read my blog post where I, I sum up like fairly quickly what the six items that NIST is kind of looking for are. But here's the, here's, here's the devil in the details that always happens with any legislative effort. What the White House announced is like, we've got this label and they showed off the label, yay. What they still need to do is build the program and actually set the security criteria. So they're gonna do that with the FCC and the FCC has, they're going to start what they call, it's called a notice of proposed rulemaking, but it's basically how the FCC sets rules. And you'll get a chance to comment on all these rules. Uh -huh. Everybody else will. So, and then the FCC is going to be like, here are the official criteria from on high. Is this somewhere and else then we will see them. lobbyists coming into play and saying, yes. hey, well, we really like this. Because yeah, this you know. stuff costs money. You can't, you know, mm. it, 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 the only reason they wouldn't build it in is because it costs money to do it and to, to maintain it. Can I ask one question? Well, does, it, does the NIST yeah. document talk about uh, update, auto updating? Because that's, it I does. think we agree, so, the most important feature of all. It does talk about auto updates. There's, I think it's like the fourth section, maybe, you Got were it. scrolling through. Yeah, um, good. So, so it does suggest that these devices should be updated, firmware updatable in case of... They uh, have to be firmware good. updatable. Very important. Good. And they, I mean, yeah, the NIST, I will say the NIST rules are very comprehensive. The one thing this label doesn't have that I'm really bummed about, but maybe it'll get it in the comments, I don't know, is privacy. So there's nothing in here talking about like how someone's data, like what device, what sensors are on a device, how your data from that device is actually used. It's just all about, so this is all security only, which is good. But privacy is still a big part for they, most they, consumers. They do talk security. a little bit about it should, you know, the data should be, they don't talk about so privacy So in 2.2.2, it's in documentation, but that is not actually one of the things you're going to need. Okay. Like to get, it's not one of their, um, I don't remember the words they used to describe it, but uh, the product capabilities. So there are six product capabilities that need to be there. Um, and if you go into developer activities, 2.2.2, is documentation and that talks about like things you should have in there but well and you, also the the yeah. biden administration did not commit to fully supporting this document they said leaning right. leaning on this yes. NIST document which well, is gotta, by the way they got a c national institute of standards and technology All not right. time i said time and they are responsible for time but it's mm. technologies yeah. so yeah <laughs> more than just time okay uh, this looks so, pretty good, though. I mean, I mean, it's impressive. What's the next step? Do they have to go to Congress, or can this be done by fiat? No, they, the FCC is going to sometime soon, ish, within the next month or so. I hope will issue what they call a notice of proposed rulemaking, okay. and then there'll be like it's usually like a sixty-day comment period. It can be anywhere from like thirty to ninety-day comment period, and that's when they're going to be like. Hey, here's the NIST document. Here are the rules we're thinking of. What do you think? And then people write the, write in, tell them what they think. And then the FCC will vote at a meeting to approve the program. Good. Now, open questions. I mentioned privacy. Second open question. Hey, what happens if you don't, like, if you say you're secure and then you're not? Yeah, what's the fine? We don't what, know. What, what's that's, the, well, that's the, more FTC than FCC in that case, so, isn't it? Well, no, because the FCC is responsible for this program. And if you talk to people in Washington, the reason why is the FCC is like, we'll do it. And the FTC is like, God, give it to them. We are so busy. FCC has um, more enforcement you 
arms than the FTC. FTC has very limited enforcement capability. FTC is busy losing cases these days, too. So. Don't well, say that. In- Cory Doctorow would spank you. For <laughs> that. Oh, oh. And I'm going to get to that in a little bit. But go ahead. <laughs> Yeah. So that's so that's this. Oh, there's also a, so the trust mark will be on the box, presumably sometime around 2024 is the hope. And then there's also going to be a QR component, which is where you can look to see more fine tuned details, fine grade details about things. And because security doesn't stay still, it's also where you'll be able to check and make sure it's still secure. So if you're buying this box, you know, you're you're buying it off of a from a Best Buy in the middle of nowhere and it's been on the shelf for two years. You can be like, hey. Are you still legit? With this announcement, have you seen any opposition? No one's going to explicitly. No, because no be, one's. No one. Yeah, yeah, no one's. Not yet, secure. anyway. No, they'd all be under the table yeah. and say, "Hey, a Senator Manchin, you know, this is a terrible idea. Would you mind uh, helping us?" That's, out a little yeah, bit? that's what, what it is. Like, like whole lives lives somewhere, all of yeah. this stuff. Because yeah. it just seems so, like. Where, so they'll come in to weaken some of the things. You'll see their comments. Yeah, you'll see them in the comments saying things like, "All right, no default passwords is fine, but." Requiring multi-factor authentication for some of this stuff is just too much. It's too much. Yeah. Do they? Do they require MFA? You would be surprised. So MFA is mentioned in there as one of the better ways Yikes. to handle this. But Do not I think, required because that's a little well, that most consumers well, are not so going to know how to do that. Every device is actually. So I talked to Ann. Oh, gosh. Nurberger. Uh, what's her title? Ah, this is audio. Ah, um, anyway, I talked to, I'm not going to call her. Ann Neuberger, lady. national security official, who serves as the yes. deputy national security advisor for cyber and merging technologies yes. for the Biden administration. That Ann Neuberger? Yes, that is, is that who I said. Yes, that, <laughs> okay. Neuberger, that's Ann. Um, so she, like, like with Energy Star, you know, every appliance has different criteria they have to meet different levels based on what they are because like a washing to make an energy efficient washing machine is different than making an energy efficient refrigerator so there will be standards for different sets of devices different iot devices so you may not need mfa on your egg counter but you might need it on your baby monitor Okay. Okay. okay, that's, so that's going to be yeah. part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they're going to hide a lot of complexity behind this, which is good because most consumers, they don't want to understand all that and they shouldn't have to. There's an old uh, joke about Silicon Valley companies, new startups, releasing the T-shirt before they release the product. Mm. And this is the Biden administration yeah. releasing the T-shirt <laughs> before this is, they have This anything. is indeed. <laughs> they got a label anyway. Mm-hmm. Hey, we got a label. All right. Uh, th- there'll be a lot more. But as Stacey would always say, discussion is good. We need the discussion. Yeah. But I mean, really, seriously, they're like announcing a label, a label like, before honest. they have a standard. I know. Uh, yeah, good point. You know, I mean, come well, on. Well, in October, I mean, so they announced this, they actually announced that they wanted to create this label back in October. Okay. So we were all like, okay. And then NIST got, you know, they were like, okay, here, let's, here's, here's what we want this to do. And this was supposed to be announced in April, and it was not. So, you know, these things take more time than... Hey, we got a t-shirt. I'm not complaining, but <laughs> let's now let's finish the job. And, and We're going to get an NPRM. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> Good. I so let, a- let the record also show, I got CC'd on an email this morning from Craig Newmark All right. to Stacy. Uh, responding to her newsletter saying what good news this is and how excited he is. Oh, I think it's huge news. About cybersecurity. But remember, there's a presidential election in a year, and uh, who knows, you know, a, a new Congress in, in a, a two years. And mm-hmm. Well, but okay, so and new the members FCC of the will FCC. have made their rules. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, but Let's new get members, going. Let's so hurry up. We'll have the criteria by the end of this year, presumably. Good. And then, so you would be able to see it before the election. 2024 is when we're doing the election. The other thing I really like is there's a kind of a nutrition label for IoT security, security and privacy facts that will be on the box. So I think that's a, that's a really, that's for, I think for a consumer, even more than the, the, the badge, mm-hmm. that's going to be a value. So that's not necessarily what it's going to look like. That's theoretical. You mean there's no Bravo Temp or Eco House thermostats? No, the, I'm talking about I'm talking about the data that's going yeah, yeah, to be on that yeah. label. But it, at and least they want to do something. Uh, not like everybody this. does. 
Well, of course. Yeah. That's the last thing. So that's, no, that's a proposed label. I think that's the Scilab's proposed label. That's not actually. Well, this is from the FCC. I mean. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, obviously there will be opposition. Although the good news is a lot of the IoT uh, manufacturers that don't want this are Chinese no-name brands that aren't probably going to have much lobbying clout in the halls of the, mm-hmm. of Washington D.C. and and in fact you the big companies like Amazon and Wise who are trying to compete against these no-name companies will Mm-hmm. So let's hope that Amazon and Wise and Apple and all these other companies say, here's an opportunity for us to distinguish our high quality products from these inexpensive Chinese knockoffs. I hope. That is, yeah, that is the hope. Uh, oh, that's a different label. Okay. So that might be the FCC's label because that's a that's a take from the Scilabs label, which has way too much information on it. So yeah. Can I ask a question, okay. Stacey? Yeah, I mean, it, it strikes me that there, when we talk about cybersecurity here, there's two ends of this. You've talked about the consumer end of this. You want your baby monitor to be safe so somebody can't snoop in on it or whatever. But then there's the larger national secure cybersecurity question about you're shutting down systems and wreaking havoc. Um, what is this really more about? So remember Mirai all the way back in 2015? Uh, it yeah, was December of 2015. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that actually was taking over networked video cameras. Mm-hmm. And they, they, they weren't actually true IoT devices. They weren't modern. But what that did is that allowed hackers to take over uh, and gather an amount, enormous amount of bandwidth that was then used against U.S. companies or just companies. So this is more so your... There, there's two things. The main thing is we don't want to give hackers access to bandwidth from consumer devices that they can then use to attack websites of whatever infrastructure, whatever, right? So to do those kind of DDoS attacks. The other element mm-hmm. is because, and that's because consumers are dumb. We, we don't, we're not cybersecurity experts. We shouldn't have to be, right? right. So they want to lock that vector down. And then the other part is they, it's good for consumers. I mean, if you can also benefit consumers by making it so, I mean, we haven't seen anything like this yet, but it's not implausible to think of hackers getting a hold of popular like thermostats and doing a ransomware attack that, you know, locks everybody's thermostat, locks everyone out in. in Right, but what what I'm trying to get to is this. I wonder whether there's going to be much consumer interest or demand for labels on things beyond your standard moral panic. The Chinese are watching, whereas the real import here is to not let their devices be taken over and bad things happen at a, at a national level, at, a, at an infrastructural level. So that it's really the government that cares, should care more about this than the consumer. Whether the consumer cares or not may not matter so much as whether or not there's an agreement on the things that matter at the higher infrastructural level. There's there's two points there. One is that we're bringing things into our home that are going to be ultimately connected back to our public infrastructure. If you look at like ener- demand response programs and this goal towards smarter energy management, and they mention in here they're going to work with the EPA for inverters and car chargers. We're bringing things into our home that we're buying that are going to be connected back to the public grid in that case. And the mm-hmm. government does have a vested interest. In I, that I agree with that. I think that's the, that's what I'm right. saying. That's the important part is the government's interest. More so than that's the it. But yeah, in, in stopping DDoS attacks and those things are very important. But I do think there is also interest in making sure that a large swath of consumers doesn't suddenly see all of their door locks open at once because mm-hmm. we will. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That's good. Right. All right. You know, a like, it's a variety of things. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I'm just trying, I'm trying to understand the consumer interest. demand for this. But it is voluntary. And so I could always buy an insecure device, but then at least the government will say, oh, well, I'm sorry that you, you were know, Russia hacked You're your- going to hear people like us and other, you know, The Verge and everybody else say, make sure you get this. You want this. You yep. don't want to buy a device that doesn't have this. I think that that's, uh, it just gives us a way to, in a simple way, I mean, we've been saying for ages, you've been saying uh, for ages, Stacy. for instance, don't buy any IoT device. It's not firmware updatable over OTA. And 
we could say that until we're blue in the face, but most yeah. people don't even understand what we're saying. That's what I was going to say. You, we but could that badge will say it. That and that's, badge. People but want that. You still probably want to add an, an additional note to that and say, hey, make sure it's this particular badge and not just uh, company XYZ throwing their own version of the badge on there. Because... Well, you'll want the. Well, you have to the, look for the U.S. Right, cyber the US, trust. Right. Mark. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, there's we a you know really need the specify. U.S. cyber trust mark. Right. Uh, no, I think that that people aren't that dumb. Uh, no, they're not. Uh, no, they're not. In fact, it's one of the reasons Apple uh, with HomeKit has an advantage because people go, oh, Apple, they're going to do this more securely. So I'm going to trust HomeKit devices over some no-name mm -hmm. uh, Chinese smart plug. Apple's I, built that trust. Uh, yeah, and I think that this is, you know, uh, look, it's our job to make this work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's their job to make sure that this happens and there are reasonable laws and the lobbyists don't take all this stuffing out of the Ottoman. But I think it's our job also to tell consumers, make yeah. sure, you know, look for the cyber trust mark. Right. Because that uh, uh, that's well, important. And, and I don't know if it's done who right. Looks for the Energy Star. I mean, they're they're modeling well, this out of the Energy Star. No, we all do. Okay. And every oh, refrigerator you buy. No, no, no. You can't miss it. Go to an appliance yeah. store. Yeah. That's true. There's no, that's a true. big huge. number on the. It's yeah. the, you can't thing. miss yeah. it. Yeah. And people are smart enough to say that's going to cost me more in electricity than that one is. Yeah. Well, okay, but well, that's cost. That's money. That's a pocketbook thing. This isn't money so much as, uh, in fact, people are still concerned about security. Like I will tell you, and granted, my audience—they're great big giant nerds. Yes, so, they you know, are. You know, they're like <laughs> us. But they're I'd like probably fifty percent of the questions I get about connected devices are, "Hey, I'm looking at this thing. It's awesome. It's only five dollars. Is it yeah. secure?" Oh, no, okay. I can't believe Jeff and Ant are arguing that in the favor of people being too stupid to t care about this. They care about this. Um, they really do. They do. They do. And they will. These are and the we're going to make them care. These are the same people that are just all over TikTok and worried about China and those threats, too. Well, so that's because it, other, it's, other it's, media no. forces have made them care about that. People listen. And it, we just have to make sure they understand this is important. I think this is not going to. Really, uh, I hope they care. I just hope that there's yeah, an extra, here, but. Uh, extra bit of diligence on our part in, in in administration to say, hey, this is what we really need to care about. Well, the only thing you could do a step beyond this was something like the FDA, which is it's if it's not NIST approved, it's not available for sale in the U.S. And I imagine if so there frankly, we go. security becomes a bigger issue, maybe that will happen. People are aware. People don't want to get hacked. Yeah, how many people nah, want antivirus on. software? And Wait a minute. People don't want to get hacked, but how many people you know what their password is password? Well, come on. that's just because the word hasn't gotten out. We need, I mean, that's a failure of, t of technology That's actually, much, it's gotten much better. It has, absolutely. We actually got data on this like a couple months ago that was like, that showed, and it was actually generational. They broke it out by generations. And except for boomers, everybody's gotten that message. Hey. Hey. <laughs> it's funny looking here in the Discord and, and mine is like, password exclamation point. There you go. Ex oh, you put a bang on yours. Okay. Yeah. 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 It, people in the Discord are, are applauding you and your faith in people's intelligence. Where I, not so much. Not no, right Quippy says I'm with Jeff and Ann. People are dumber than you think, and even the smart ones pretend to be dumb. For people fear, for fear, people will think them intelligent, and they'll be kicked out of the in group. In the in group, that's right. Mm -hmm. It's not that they're dumb. It's the do they, what, What's their motivation they don't care. to care? Yeah. They don't care. Right. There's plenty like, of motivation to care. The There's been enough news about bad guys spying on you now mm -hmm. that they are aware of it. And well, much of that is moral panic and ridiculous. Well, that's fine. Stacey, <laughs> Stacy's argument is the best one is, and I don't, I'm never going to put in one of these door locks anyway, but um, you don't want it to open, you know, without your, your with, with, by, by some bad, honestly, bad hack going on. Honestly, that's how people show they care. They say, I'm staying away from IoT, well, which is why so, IoT so companies ought to go, go along with this. They ought to go yeah. along with this. Yeah. Well, in, yeah. in IoT companies have wanted the government to do something, like the good ones have. Like when I talk to people who are building connected devices, they're like, look, Stacy, I would love to like really go whole hog on this, but I can't because I have to make my device as cheap as this right. no-name thing from China because people don't know the difference. Right. With this- right. They've got something like everybody who's who cares about this will be working towards this standard. And then everybody who doesn't. Yeah, you could still buy a cheap no name sensor, but, you know, you 
you won't know if it's as secure. And there will be, I mean, and people will still buy that. Sure. Don't get me wrong. There'll we'll be plenty of people. People will 100% do that. But you know, that's, it's like public health. You don't have to have everybody get vaccinated to have a, a real yeah. impact on the spread of a disease. And so uh, it's, it's just a public health measure. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, more people buy this than don't, then that's a good thing. And it'll make a big difference, I think. Uh, and I think that there's some incentive for the, for business not to undermine this, but to make it a real uh, a standard. A lot of companies legitimately want this. And yeah. the fact that Best Buy and Amazon were there and talking about how Good. Good. that could be used in retail settings. Good. So like, it's not just the manufacturers, it's also the people who sell these devices are like, uh, we really want to make this yeah. work. It's in their interest. They get DDoSed, they, got, they, get, <laughs> they get breached. It's in their interest to do this. It's good for everybody. And okay, economically, it gives them a foot up against uh, Chinese knockoffs, which are eating their lunch. So I think this might actually have a shot. I'm crossing my fingers, because this does need to happen. I hope so. Let's take a little break, and then I'm going to tell you why Jeff is a... Is a... <laughs> You can't even say it. I'm trying to find a. I'm trying to find a phrase from Corey <laughs> like Dr. Rose. Rose piece. Great piece. <laughs> he is somebody bad. Something like that. <laughs> I will never be the wordsmith that Corey Dr. O is, but I will. I will read to you. We shall all Corey's to great be. work in just a little bit. First, a word from ACI Learning, our great sponsors. Our listeners know. I know you know the name IT Pro. They've been one of our trusted, beloved sponsors for more than a decade since they started in Gainesville, Florida. Now they're part of ACI Learning. That's why you see ACI Learning all over our studios. They are our studio name sponsor uh, and a great company. Together, ACI Learning and IT Pro have elevated their highly entertaining, highly informative, bingeable video content with over 7,200 hours of on-demand IT training to choose from. Not just IT, but audit and cybersecurity too. And it's all fresh and up to date because they've got those studios running out of Gainesville, Florida, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, creating more great, bingeable, high-quality IT training. ACI Learning provides world-class service from assisting you in, cho in choosing which learning path suits you best all the way through helping you find the right career opportunity. If you're beginning a new career in IT, this is the place to go. You could fortify existing expertise if you're already in IT with self-paced IT training videos, interactive practice labs, practice tests so you can take the test before you take the final exam. And it really works. Philippe B was in public relations, okay? He just, uh, on, his, on the uh, website, shared his testimonial uh, about and, and how much he loves ACI Learning's great edutainers, their instructors. He talked about Wes, who's been with IT Pro forever. Wes is an awesome instructor, says Felipe. I passed my 220-1101 on July 4th on the first try. He says, I'm coming from zero. I was a PR guy. But I love it. He manages to explain, Wes, he's talking about, it, it manages to explain concepts in a way you understand it very well. He says, <laughs> Felipe says, I can't wait to start 2.20.11.02 now. That's a great story, isn't it? No, you got to try the, the ACI Learning's amazing instructors. And then when you got the skills, practice them in the practice labs. You can test, experiment, set up Windows Server, Windows Clients, all in an HTML5 browser, which means you can do it on anything, even a Chromebook. And MSPs love it because they can actually test new apps and updates without compromising their live systems. The practice exams, fantastic. ACI Learning gives you practice exam questions from all the big certs, Microsoft, CompTIA, EC Council, PMI, many, many more. I've always thought this. If you can take a practice exam over and over till you really got it down, when you sit for the real exam, you're going to be so ready. You're going to ace it just like Felipe did. Access every vendor, every skill you need to advance your IT career in one place. ACI Learning is the only official video training for CompTIA. They've got Microsoft IT training. They've got Cisco training, Linux training, Apple training, security, cloud, and I can go on and on. And you'll love it because you'll have a personal account manager who's there as your kind of ombudsman to, to, to guide you every step of the way, make sure you're getting exactly what you need so that you could be successful in your field. Your win is their win, and they really believe that. 
learn IT, pass your certs, get your dream job with ACI Learning. Learn more about ACI Learning's premium training options across audit, IT, and cybersecurity readiness at go.acilearning.com slash twit. That's the special address. Go.acilearning.com slash twit. And individuals, twit30, you see that code right there? Twit30 gets you 30% off a standard or premium individual IT pro membership. Go.acilearning.com slash twit. We love ACI Learning. We thank them. We love IT pro. Some of the best people in the business. You're really going to get great. There's no better place to get that training. Go.acilearning.com slash twit. Please use that address so they uh, know you saw it here. Thank you. <laughs> Here's a new uh, badge. God, we gotta get stickers. <laughs> we really gotta get these stickers. Uh, well, well, we do. We do have some. Um, Leo Laporte, Mr. Benito is Blue Sky Hype Influencer. Thank you, Joe Esposito. Thank you, what? Sir. We have stickers. We, we, we do have a. a oh my here. God! Where did we get these? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, Mr. My Joe Lord. Esposito setting us up and. Uh, Mr. Victor and Mr. Nielsen. They printed Let's these see him. up. Let's see him. Sat down and, and got us squared away with with some stickers. Uh, I love this. I love yours, Jeff. Oh f me, go bore a hole. It's brilliant. <laughs> oh it my gosh, brilliant. these are great. Jeff Jarvis declares this is moral panic. Stacy, I'm sorry one. about your bougie seal of approval, but it really is <laughs> no. The bougie seal of approval. It is really awesome. It is really <laughs> awesome. Aunt Pruitt's seal of approval. No, that's legit. Yes. Or no, thank you, no, sir, for that, the that, disapproval. That horrible whiskey. Oh, those are <laughs> wonderful. Air quote whiskey. Oh, okay. You got to get Lisa to add this as a member premium. We're we working. We got to find it. I'm taking these though to put we're, them on my laptop. We're working on it. Yeah, I'm actually <laughs> going to put some on my laptop too. I was just going to uh, mention before we get to uh, Lena Khan and uh, and Corey Doctorow's spirited defense of her that the folks at Framework have uh, just a couple of days ago opened up pre-orders for their next generation framework 16. This, these are PCs. They're Windows or Linux. Yeah, I remember. I thought you were all about Linux for these. Yeah, I run Linux yeah. on my. Fr I have the 13 inch, but this new one. Oh, you said 16. This is this. Yeah, this is what you should be thinking about, Mr. Pruitt. Oh. The the whole idea of these, which I, you know, I'm I'm not a shareholder in these like Linus is. I'm I'm not. They're not an advertiser. Right. Um. I just really think it's it's uh, it's the answer to. The uh, right of, for repair and yeah. for uh, reusability and sustainability. These are upgradable laptops. You can as you can buy them assembled or assemble them yourself. But more importantly, uh, if a new processor comes out, you can get a new motherboard and put it in yourself. They have keyboard modules. Look, you can have a number pad, or if you don't want a number pad, you can take out the number pad and slide the keyboard over and make it central. You can you can change where the trackpad. You just this thing is completely customizable. Can you hackintosh it? Kidding. I'm kidding. You could probably, yeah. You, you have to, I don't know. They don't <laughs> that's not the promise of it. No. I would put Linux on it. Yeah. Um anyway, I just ordered it. They uh, I won't be getting it to the first of the year, so I that's will uh, cool. I will do a um Unboxing and I'll, I ordered the DIY edition, which means I have to put it together. Put it all like, oh man! Well, that's right. I did the of course last you did. time. I have the on the show. Inch. So, um, and in fact, I, at first I ordered an upgrade for the 13 inch. Mm -hmm. You can upgrade it with an AMD processor and so forth. And then I thought, well, or <laughs> I could spend just a few thousand dollars more, few more. <laughs> and get the 16 inch. So, um, guess what? That means the Leo's next Leo's garage sale will have the 13 inch. Woo! -hoo! Yeah. I wonder if they're going to update the. Um, Chromebook version. Uh, that's a good question. I know they that's did a Chromebook. Cool. 16 inch. They've yeah. lived up to their promise because they uh, shipped the 13-inch in 2021. I bought it. You, I could upgrade it now to an, a newer processor, a new AMD or Intel processor. I can upgrade a lot of features. Oh. So I bet you, I bet you, I don't know. I don't see that here. Their new 16 inches are all AMDs, which is interesting. Radeon... Ryzen 7s. I don't have a problem with the AMD chipset. Um, most of my problems with Windows. Well, that's why I'm running Linux. Yeah. <laughs> but, and the other thing is you don't have to pay the Windows premium on yeah. this. Yeah. You can order it without Windows and it's 139 bucks less. You know, what's amazing is, is Dell. I mean, this is what this is how Dell started. Right. Yeah. Well, but, but Michael Dell was building it. <laughs> yeah. Right? right. In his dorm I know, room but at even UC. so. Even so. Yeah. Um, that was the dorm I was an RA in. 
No kidding. You were in the same dorm? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Not at the same time as no, Michael Tell. He no. was there in 1984. Yeah. And I was six. pretty cool, though. Well, the, the <laughs> school <laughs> didn't, yeah. the college didn't know that he was oh. running his business. It wasn't a college dorm. It was a private dorm. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. So it was legal for him to do I that. I imagine Stacy is a good RA, can't you? Oh, she'd be so great. You can't? I can. I can. No, oh, yeah. Miss Higginbotham, oh, like, really my good. boyfriend broke up with me, Miss Higginbotham, and I don't know what to do. <laughs> Mother plucker. <laughs> I just imagine Stacey's disapproving yes. look would <laughs> come in too late. What if, what if, what if, so RA stands for resident assistant. It's yeah. a uh, upper resident class. Advisor. Resident what? Advisor. Resident what? Okay. It's an upper class well, person who is in living in the dorm to advise the underclassmen, right? Kind of. A little bit of that. I, I've never heard it upper class. I'm like, that was Stacy's RA bougie. <laughs> <laughs> bougie RA. Um, yeah, it's an older, it, it, yeah. I it's was a, a sophomore when I was at RA. Oh, sophomore, you were sophomore? Junior. Oh, gosh. Sophomore. I thought it would be higher yeah. higher than that, but okay. Yeah, I always thought it was like juniors <laughs> and talk seniors. Talk about the blind leading the blind. Yeah, my boyfriend hey. left me too. <laughs> <laughs> so what was what what did people come to you as an RA? What did your, people come yeah, to you? Your job was just to be like this person like the adult on the floor, yeah. but not actually an adult. And you would I mean, yes, you were there to help, help your residents. You plan social activities. I had a nice. bulletin board that I would I used to right. physically print out onion articles. Oh wow. Like and Did you I cut out little uh, animals when they arrived? You know, your your, your spirit animals. Oh, so my cool. first my first door, like you you do stick their door knockers with their names on their door before they show up. Oh. My first one was actually three and a half inch. No, no, five and a quarter floppies. So oh, I, I had a big because we cleaned out. So you. I, Perfect. Oh. I put them on there. Yeah. So to yeah. make them feel I mean, welcome because they're was, coming. They're for living away from home for the first time. And yeah. Rangers in a strange land. That's you know, so and you're supposed to like. Stop them from smoking right. and plan like one social outing. I did actually have to. I mean, there was a lot of drama. These kids. Yeah, my like, daughter's already kept taking her magic <laughs> mushrooms away from her. Things like that. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, and that's that's actually where I met Andrew. He was an RA too. Oh, you're kidding. And when you're oh, when you're together at two in the morning and you can call someone and be like, "Hey, I'm on call," and someone just dumped out a keg of beer down the stairwell. Jeez. Oh, you mind helping me mop that up? Oh, that's. And great. they show up. True romance. Wow. Yeah. That's a guy you should marry. Love, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a wedding of narcs. It's wow. just great. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> What's a narc, I dude? prefer to think of them as prefects, if you don't mind. Yes. Uh, like, I had to, I had to call an ambulance on two of my residents, oh, okay? Like, we oh, no, that happens. Like, sure. Oh, Did you have no. RA summer camp where you all could bond and wow. get to know each other before the, the semester we, began? We drank a lot, yes. Yeah. Yes, it was. <laughs> we did do that. It's Texas, after all. Uh, all right, now on to Cory Doctorow from his fabulous blog, Pluralistic.net. Now, as you know, Corey, and he's been on the shows many times, good friend, love Corey, uh, is a bit of a muckraker. Some might think of him as a leftist, a progressive. He is a little hopping mad at all of the opprobrium Lena Khan is receiving from people like the Wall Street Journal because she's a loser. You said it even yourself, Jeff. It's you kind sure of did. getting it's into not the opprobrium so much as it I, mean, I would think that her fans are disappointed in her. No. Let me read not to him. you. <laughs> My God, writes Corey Doctorow, they sure hate Lena Khan. This once in a generation, groundbreaking, brilliant legal scholar and fighter for the public interest. Oh, th ah. This sounds like I could be the opening of Hamilton. Yes. The slayer yeah, of Reaganomics has attracted more vitriol, mockery, and dismissal than any of her predecessors in living memory. She sure must be doing something right, huh? A quick refresher in 2017, Khan, then a law student, published Amazon's antitrust paradox in the Yale Law Journal. It was a brilliant, blistering analysis showing how the Reagan-era theory of antitrust, which celebrates monopolies as efficient, had failed in its own terms, using as Amazon as an exhibit A of the ways in which post-Reagan antitrust had left Americans vulnerable to corporate use or abuse. abuse. The paper sent seismic shocks through both legal and economic circles and goosed ooh, the neo-Branzian movement 
Brandeisian movement, I should say, sneeringly dismissed as hipster antitrust. This movement is, a, uh, I can skip the, the uh, history lesson. Uh, you just want the zings. Yeah, I like the zings. <laughs> History's good, though. You should, you should read the whole thing. Uh, when Biden won the history election. History is good. Yeah, history is very. Well, there's history calling right now. <laughs> history is on the line. Is that your landline calling? <laughs> <laughs> I told you not to bother me. <laughs> uh, Mr. Meadle, Mr. Meadle. Uh, when Biden won the election, he surprised everyone by appointing Khan to the FTC. She's the chairperson. It wasn't just that she had such a radical vision. It was also that she lacked the usual corporate law experience that such an appointee would normally require. Experience that would ensure that the FTC was helmed by people whose default view of the world is it should be structured and regulated by powerful, wealthy people in corporate boardrooms. Even more surprising was that Khan was made chair of the SDC, FTC. Uh, and, of course, she got in because it just happened to be a moment in time where there were some Republicans who wanted to screw big tech, not because it was too big and powerful, but because uh, tech leaders Liberal. failed to wield that power in the ways these Republicans preferred. So they got they gave him some votes, They and he, and he got her in. Um but while tech leaders are 100% committed to the project of permanent oligarchic takeover of every sphere of American life, they are less full-throated in their support for hateful, cruel discrimination against disfavored minorities. Um, Biden's seeding of antitrust policy to the left wing of the party, combined with disaffected GOP senators viewing Khan as their enemy's enemy, led to Khan's historic appointment as FTC chair. Mm. Joined by Jonathan Cantor at uh, DOJ in the antitrust division, Tim Wu in the White House, uh, Avaro Bedoya at FTC, Rebecca Slaughter, Rohit Chopra. Uh, really, a, 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 some big antitrust brains. Uh, crucially, these new employees weren't just principled, they were good at their jobs. Mm. In 2021, Tim Wu, who uh, brilliant uh, professor, wrote an executive. You don't like him so much. OK. Wrote an executive order for Biden that laid out 72 concrete ways in which the administration could act with no further congressional authorization to blunt corporate power and insulate Americans from oligarchs, abusive and extractive Practices since then, the antitrust arm of the Biden administration have been effing ninjas <laughs> in getting expletive, getting money. stuff done in ways both large and small, working for the first time since Reagan to protect Americans from predatory businesses. You can gather from this that Corey is a fan, You're right? Yeah. All right, you think, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this in marked contrast, this is interesting to the corporate Dems champions in the administration, the corporate Dems champions like Pete Buttigieg heralded as competent technocrats, realists who are too principled to peddle hopium to the base, writing checks they can't cash. Uh, hopium? Hopium. That's yeah, nice. I like that. That's nice. Yeah. That's, a, that's a Coreyism. That's a Coreyism. I don't think that I've ever seen that word before. Hope that's kind of an Obama. That, 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 I'm surprised that wasn't put on Obama. Hope. Hopium, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, naturally, this has really pissed off all the right people. America's billionaires <laughs> and their cheerleaders in the press government and the hive of scum and villainy that is the big law think tank industrial complex. <laughs> hive of scum and villainy is a Star Trek, yeah. a Star Wars reference, right? Yeah. yeah. I think that was the... Uh, that was in the first one. Yeah, it's the... It's the Moss Eisley Spaceport, yeah. A hive, as Obi-Wan says, of scum and villainy. <laughs> it's beautiful. Take the Wall Street Journal. Since Beautiful. Khan took office, they've published 67 <laughs> vicious editorials attacking Ooh. her and their policies. Khan is living rent-free in Rupert Murdoch's head. <laughs> <laughs> One major subgenre of the attacks is that Khan shouldn't bring bringing any action against Amazon because her groundbreaking scholarship about the company means she has a conflict of interest. Holy moly, says Cory Doctorow, is this a stupid thing to say? The idea that the chair of an expert agency should recuse herself because she is an expert <laughs> is what the physicists call not even wrong. <laughs> he, is, he is a very good uh, writer. 
Uh, in any event, <laughs> um, he he defends Khan. He says the fact that people are saying she's losing it means that she's actually winning. Uh, whoa, whoa, yes, whoa, whoa, she's whoa, whoa, lost whoa. some Stop cases. There. Stop no. There. Stop there. Okay. Stop there. Right. I mean, that's he wants her to be winning, but the truth is she's been losing. Which is she? And what cases has she lost? I'm not. You you, you, can't, you couldn't remember the, the word trellis. I can't. I can't <laughs> Well, I'll give you two recent ones, the Activision case, and then she sued Meta over their acquisition of yes. Within, which right, makes a, a thing called Supernatural. She didn't want them to buy a company that does a VR game. Uh, yes, yeah, she's lost in those two cases, and I expect her to lose more. That is not a reason not to file those cases. I would submit, A, the very fact that the FTC is finally doing something is enough to get corporate boardrooms to well, sit up and pay to attention. Well, another way to look at it is also... The only thing, so the FTC does a lot more than just cases. Right. So they've actually revoked some of their merger guidelines, um, for older merger guidelines that are no longer applicable. They've also, so they're trying to modernize the industry. They're also issuing rulemaking uh, new draft merger guidelines that are actually really good. They're actually talking about what we talk about, Jeff, changing the fact that we only look at low prices for consumers as mm -hmm. the only reason to prevent a merger. So they actually, this month, issued, they're asking for comments on new merger guidelines. So in addition to the cases that we're hearing a lot about, they're also doing a lot of stuff behind Absolutely. the scenes. Yeah. Um, they're very, this is, and they're doing me, a lot of smaller enforcement actions. Here, here's an, more, Corey. Before Khan, the FTC was a conflict of interest assembly line, moving through corporate lawyers and industry hangers on without resistance for decades. Khan is the first FTC head with no conflicts. This leaves her opponents in the sweaty, desperate position of inventing conflicts out of thin air. For these corporate lick spittles, Khan's conflict is that she has a point of view. Specifically, she thinks the FTC should do its job. Mm. And yeah, you're going to lose a that. few. You're going to win a few, maybe? You're going to lose a okay, few. Okay, so here's, here's, here's the question, though. If they had someone who was, pardon me, older and more experienced, would they have done a better job of picking the battles right and winning more and then making more actual progress rather than giving the right wing uh, capitalist of Rupert the Murdoch the opportunity to say, yeah, yeah, uh, we, we, we can do anything we want now because you keep losing. So cases are brought for a couple reasons. And yes, it does suck that she's taken on two big point. cases and lost at well at that moment now she's taking on a lot of other cases that they're either driving to settlement or actually winning on or being told hey you have a point but you gotta come back with this and what i think is worth celebrating is the fact that a there is a point of view and it is a very pro-consumer and pro-small business point of view and b they're firing on not just the major cases, but all cylinders. And a lot of times you see uh, like activists kind of, or people say they're activists or democratic um, people come in behind the scenes and try to like do a lot of fluffy stuff that's pretty low value and low risk. And they can get like Jessica Rosenworcel, bless her heart, is a good case of somebody who's going for low risk, low value kind of wins when it comes to policy enactment. Mm -hmm. She's very liberal. She's she's making changes that are pretty small fry and not really consequential. Lena's at doing well and she's now she's actually going after big stuff. Why does uh, it seem it's really important that she's there because we have this AI thing looming over our head. Mm -hmm. She's announced the FTC is investigating, not suing but investigating open ai for non-consensually harvesting a bunch of personal information that needs to be investigated right that's right? that's what i'm well, thinking in, she's in lost ago, these two but at least she's she, keeping everybody honest she's, and she's gone after amazon ring as a privacy dumpster fire mm -hmm. that's this is Corey's words uh con uh has talked how her agency is protecting mom and pop grocers from giant price gouging greedflation drunk national chains uh, and then maybe costing consumers more money as a result, nah, just as the just as the old fight, can't. just as the old fight against AT, A and P back in the day, where consumers. Yeah, were I know, hurt. but we can't just look at like lowering prices as 
the only metric by which we judge if something is a good thing. Amazon to do. brought prices like, down initially, but eventually, exactly. what happens? They drive everybody out of business, and then guess the exact what? Exact same fight over A and P. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, exact same. all right. I, I think. Well, in, so, and the FTC is also look. I mean, you could lower prices for consumers, but then hurt the environment. You can lower prices for consumers and drive all of your competition out of business. And those are some of the, like, that's if you look at do. her paper, that yeah, she, that's dumping. Wait, I mean, yeah. if you, did, ha, did you read her paper? No, her I've got to now. Amazon? I want to read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm it sure that's good. kind of and was the inspiration for Corey's and shittification uh, uh, article, which is similar, uh, similar premise, I think. Khan's opponents did manage before, to repeat a lot of smears against her, but not the bogus conflict of interest, interest story. They, this is where it's germane to Jeff's accusation. They also accused her of being 0-4 in her actions to block mergers. Now, here's the response, Jeff. Ignoring the huge number of mergers that have been called off or not initiated because M&A professionals now understand they can no longer expect these mergers to be waved through. Unless having seen... For losses, maybe they're now going to be emboldened. They might try, but she's gonna. She's still going to go after them. Corey and uses an ex as an money. example. Just last night, I spoke with a friend who owns a medium-sized tech company that Meta tried to buy out, only to withdraw from the deal because Meta's lawyers told them it would get challenged at the FTC that's with an uncertain right. outcome. That's what I'm digging right there. It, it's keeping folks honest and, and not trying to just slide stuff I mean, under the you table. you can't. You don't, I what you what don't want, about I understand what you're saying out. is there might be a middle ground. What you don't want is an FTC yeah. that says, come on, everybody, just merge. Exactly. We don't care. No, you don't want But that. you don't want somebody to pick fights they can't win. And so the right. only argument would be, is she picking fights that she can't win? That's my point. Okay. That's All my right. point. Okay, that's fair. that's fair. And it's not just winning. I mean, it also, I think one can judge whether all the fights are the right fights. I disagree with some of the fights. You're going to agree with some. We're going to disagree with some. And mm. that's okay. Mm. Uh, but I think she came in. Oh, now I'll piss you off. She came in as an ideologue. And it's hard for an ideologue in Washington to make great victories. And so she at some done... point, she's going to disappoint those. At some point, I, I, I'm surprised I don't see, you know, Corey at some point kind of saying... But I wish we win more cases. That's the sort of centrist BS that people say. And that's what ends up. That's Ooh. how we have been ending up pandering to the farther and farther right, right by on, calling these Stacey. people ideologues. I agree 100%. And I will also say, you mentioned Amazon ring privacy. She did a privacy settlement against Microsoft around children's rules. She also is helping dismantle non-competes, which I think, Jeff, you would Ooh, be a big fan of. I agree with that. Agree with that. She's yeah. also, so she's, yeah, I'm, not saying she's, I'm not FTC saying she's is fighting a lot of battles. That's the point. The fact that she's lost four is not, is not the only story. Remember Click to Cancel? They, we had this story last mm -hmm. week. They're, they're fighting companies that make it so hard and they're actually changing rulemaking to cancel yeah, something. Are they doing, are they, it, I haven't heard a thing about doing that with newspapers, by the way. And but okay. Well, but they want to make it as easy to cancel as it was to sign up. Mm -hmm. And uh, who is against mm -hmm. that? Except the I know companies. I absolutely agree. Yeah, I absolutely agree. So, and they're doing their junk fee stuff. I mean, I I get you, Jeff, but I think you're doing the sort of thing that you actually hate when journalists do like headlines that totally like occlude the rest of the value of the story or the situation. I feel like you're looking at the headlines of Lena no. Khan's lost four big cases. Well, I think those headlines matter. Uh, I'm not doing what Corey is accusing the right wing of the Wall Street Journal of doing. I'm not accusing her of, of, of conflict of interest or any of that stuff. I, I do say, I don't know why that was a laugh line. Uh, I do sorry. say- well, I, I, she, the right wing is going after her in all kinds, a whole laundry list of things. I'm not doing any of that. I'm saying, A, she's lost important cases. B, she is treating all of technology, moral panic time, as a bad, a presumed bad. That's she where is not she treating my... all of technology as a presumed bad. She is actually actively. Thank you. Thank. That is why I was laughing, Jeff. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I didn't see it. Stacy Higginbotham's last nerve has been hit. Yes, let's add another sticker to the collection. <laughs> oh, okay, I didn't have usually, that on my Jeff, screen. Down usually, here. that's me that uh, that gets uh, that button. Oh 
man. Finally. I'm sorry. Let's, I'm, I'm going to finish the Cory Doctorow article with his concluding okay. paragraph, and then we can all burn Jeff at the stake. Uh, <laughs> That's what, what normally happens. If we back Khan and her team, Corey writes, they will protect us from these scams. Don't let them. The right. Is him convince you to give up hope. This is the start of the fight, not the end. We're trying to reverse 40 years of Reaganomics here. It won't happen overnight. There will be setbacks, but keep your eyes on the prize. This is the most exciting moment for countering corporate power and giving it back to the people in my lifetime. We owe it to ourselves, our kids, and our planet to fight one. Union now! <laughs> okay, sorry, I wonder if he's projecting this to be another 40-year battle. Since we're trying to clean up, for Corey is great, and he's also one of the best writers he's, we he's have. A, he's a polemicist, and he's a brilliant people. polemicist. And this is polemic at the highest order. Yeah, yeah, that's um, you got to take. And I don't control. disagree with him. I understand your point absolutely, Jeff. And you're a little bit of hand wringing here, but I, uh, I think in the final analysis, if you look at the entire scope of what this very active FTC has done, uh, it is absolutely positive. And uh, and and so I just want I just want to caution people to be a little bit careful, focusing on well she's lost four cases now, because there's so just as you say, Stacy, there's so much more going on uh, that they've done that we all we agree with, you know, things like this can't yeah and by cancel. an activist FTC is the right way to look at this. It, the FTC under Lena Khan is issuing more statements and settling and pushing more lawsuits and pushing back like more than any other FTC in like recent memory. Yeah. And I mean, you could categorically look at that just by looking at the press releases issued. FTC and announces nationwide enforcement sweep to stem the tide of illegal telemarketing calls to U.S. consumers. That was just yesterday. Uh, look at all that. This is these are all FTC actions. FTC and federal and state right. partners nationwide robocall and telemarketing enforcement sweep in Chicago. FTC sues to block uh, IQV's acquisition of Propel Media to prevent increased concentration of healthcare programmatic advertising. There's a, there's the headlines, and then if you go to the, this is just the last week, by the way. Uh, if you go to just the FTC.gov uh, website and look at their actions, they have been very active in doing a lot of uh, good things. I think. Um, and a lot of the, I mean, I mean, honestly, I want my government agencies to actually take action against things. And a lot of times there's so much regulatory capture in these things. And it, it, mm -hmm. it makes us so cynical about government. And I think we're of an era that is super cynical. And this is a, Lena Khan's actually helping me not be a cynical, Thank I guess, you. by I actually taking these actions. So. Thank you, Corey Doctorow, too, for uh, for clearing my mind and allowing me to steal your prose. And I will get up on this table and 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 hammer it home. We need a. Why don't we have a speaker's corner in the U.S. like they have in Hyde Park in London? Where well, any, they had it in Canada, in Toronto. They did had a they? Great speaker's corner. Imagine. Did they really? Uh, City TV. Know that. Oh, City, City TV. TV. Yeah, yeah. That's they had one, those yeah. machines. You'd go we have public assignment. access. Isn't it Portland? <laughs> <laughs> I actually did one of those machines in Toronto. Uh, that was actually really cool. Who was that? Was Mo Moses Zimmer? Moses Zimmer, uh, who was a great visionary uh, yeah. way back when with uh, City TV, and he put all over the city in the early days little kiosks with video. Cameras I think it was one them. just. Oh, that was just on Queen Street. There was one on Queen Street. There was one on the City TV uh, offices on Queen right. Street, and yes. you had to put in a loon. <laughs> which was a single dollar uh, coin. Loon. Yeah, with a it had a, a loon on it. Is it is it a loony? Oh, yeah, loony. that's a loony. Yeah. A loony is loony. the loon. It's a single. Yeah, there's a loony and there's a toony, okay. which is two loons. Two. two oh, did not know. Okay. Two two dollars. There are dollar <laughs> coins and two dollar coins in the. Canadian. He made whole shows out of it. I mean, it was the original TikTok. It was the original YouTube. Yeah. People, uh, uh, fifty. Uh, uh, he started baseball 50 years players ago. would come in, in after a bad game and apologize for yeah. a play. Yeah, uh, people would propose to each other. They'd make up songs and come into each other, and they made shows out of this. It was brilliant. When we started, um, what became News Twelve New Jersey, I insisted on doing the same thing here in New Jersey, and they built a kiosk and they put it in the mall 
but they didn't know how to do it. And they screwed yeah. Up. It was, it was we, uh, it's funny you should say that because I went, made a field trip to City TV. There it is on, on uh, Young Street. Uh, to a field trip on, on uh, to City TV and did a tour on the inside with Amber MacArthur as we were setting Amber. up Twit. Uh, because I wanted to have an open studio. He was the one who, who invented the idea of open oh, studios. Okay. Yes. And I wanted to duplicate what Moses did uh, there. And he was... The whole, the whole building was a studio. Yeah. They could they could plug in anywhere in the building. Um, it was brilliantly done. And, and, and it was also the anchors, you know, not sitting at a desk, walking around. Um, it was exactly it was what I wanted to do with, uh, oh. in the early days of Twit with the uh, Brick House. And that you could go to any desk and you'd plug in the camera and plug in the microphone and now it's live, you know. If you look up Speaker's Corner and City TV, there's some video you can probably show. That's what I'm looking for, yeah. There's a, actually a TV series. Um, yeah, there's the kiosk. <laughs> you would, oh. the, uh, it does say known as out of order, so the guy's just... <laughs> wow. It was out of order when I was there as well. Um, insert loony. Then Is start, that where the kids in the hall came from? Start, no. It might be, actually, come to think of it. I don't know. <laughs> City TV was, you know, acquired and lost its edge oh, it lost over its time. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, this Put is... Put it in the Discord, Leo. Here's there, another the one. The Discord. This is at the A Channel Victoria building, so this would be in, in BC. All right, I'm going to... Uh, let me Let me click this link here. Oh, I still have Stacey Higginbotham. You put it in sticker. Discord. <laughs> that, that's put it in Discord. I accidentally closed the uh, Discord. Chat. I don't see it in Discord. I don't know where you put it. Mr. Jarvis said you lost. Right there. It says Jeff Jarvis today. Oh, it's a brick house. That's the problem. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. That's why I didn't see <laughs> I got. See, I get in Patience, before everybody else. Here we go. Speaker's for... Corner, ladies and gentlemen. You want to fast forward some of this music, please. Our farmers, big time, give them money what they need because we got problems with food and uh, and uh, That's in the, that was in the yeah, store that this. was there the at television the between six and seven because my mother has the biggest crush on you. Oh. <laughs> trying to pick up a girl, okay, and all those other women are trying to pick up the guys. They're Second time he's spoken of it. it. I think someone's a little obsessed, don't Just you think? A little, I think somebody needs some. Oh called. boy, this is As the, TikTok. Uh, nurses in the NICU. We just like to say Aww. that without them, these Aww. two wouldn't have never made it. Oh, this is why it works, right? Uh, yeah, this, this is, is why humanity. it works. It's real people and talking about stuff, sometimes dumb, stations, that they care about. This is TikTok. Yeah. This is, it is. It's TikTok in the early days. It is exactly. Yeah. I mean, where we got quotas to meet. Come on, guys. Help us out. We need money. We need to make a living. We're Ooh. teenagers. Come on. Guys, you're teenagers. Chief and boss and how's it going slugger and nice to see you big guy i hate that <laughs> that's by the way that's me i, I don't do know too. I, I recorded that some years ago <laughs> you don't say babe <laughs> i hate that actually they probably call you big guy all the time I have a buddy that calls me Tiny, actually. Tiny's even one, better. One of the uh, yeah. unknown things about it was you thought you had to put in the loony to make it go. The truth is the camera was just on all the time. It was always time. on. They, didn't, yeah. they weren't that sophisticated. They hadn't figured that part out. That's hysterical. That's pretty cool, though. That's so, isn't that, that's it, so Zimmer cool. was such a pioneer in television. He was. I don't um, care to be a part of it, but I, it's still a pretty cool idea what they did. Yeah. yeah. Well, Dude, you, don't, you could go on there and make a petition for the hardheads to get... Into college. Yeah, yeah, I could, couldn't I? You basically, you have Speaker's yeah, Quarter. It's called Twitter, yeah, really, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, same thing. This was Twitter <laughs> before thing. Twitter. That's Speaker, exactly the thing. What did you call it? Speaker table? Speaker's Speaker, Corner. Speaker's Corner. And it's it, because in for, I don't know, for a hundred years, they've had Speaker's Corner at Hyde Park in London where you, people, <laughs> crazy people would go put a Apple box and they get on I thought that was Portland. They, <laughs> <laughs> no, London, England. Oh, that too, I thought yeah. that was just New York City. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> I lived in New York, the street preachers. That's basically Oh, them. yeah, absolutely. And they have megaphones, yeah. right? I don't know if you're allowed to have a megaphone in Hyde Park. Maybe you are. I don't know. Speaker's Corner. Here it is. The Royal Parks, a traditional site for public speeches and debates since the mid-1800s. They even have a little plaque there. That's, see, we didn't invent free speech. <laughs> no. 
What? No such thing. No, we did not. No, we did not. <laughs> All right. Let's take a break. When we I come just, back. I just read a wonderful book. I listened to it on, on, on Audible. I'll do a quick plug here of it called, oh, hell, where is it? Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Happiness by Peter Moore, which is the British roots of, no, shush. So we British didn't... roots of our sense of, of freedom. Ah, very uh, John interesting. John Wilkes, who's one of my heroes, Benjamin Franklin, um, uh, and other characters in it. It's it's really well done. Nice. I must read. I will add it to my um, wish list, which is ever growing. Now you can do a commercial. It's it's ever growing. Well, we just did an Audible commercial, and they didn't even pay for it. Mm. Damn it. <laughs> Tickety dang it. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, Britain and the American dream. Well, it hey, makes look, sense. If you listen to the sample, it is that accent, too. Is it really? It's narrated. Oh, John Lee is wonderful, one of my favorite readers. Adams had done as much as anyone to bring the issue of independence to a head. As he rose in reply to Dick. I love John Lee. I love John Lee. I love yeah, John Lee. He does um, Peter F. Hamilton's novels. You've probably heard his John Lee's narration, John. No? Oh, you read him in book form, you old-fashioned fuddy-duddy you. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by Brooke Lennon. I must buy more so that I can have, because I change the sheets every week because I'm a civilized human. Brooke Lennon is the <laughs> best linen ever from Brooklyn. B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N. -O -O -E Sleeping during the hot summer months, and we are getting the hot summer months, to say the least, can be a little bit sweaty, a little bit difficult. That's why you need Brooklinen's hotel quality luxury bedding delivered directly to you at your door for a fair price because they have sheets for the cool sleeper. Cool off with their crisp, classic, Percale Weave. Now, Lisa and I opted for the best-selling Buttery Smooth Luke's Sateen Sheets. Oh, those feel so good. Brooklinen's mission is to provide you with hotel-quality luxury bed lit bedding at a very fair price. And I have to say, having bought very expensive linens, I was so pleased to see the prices of Brooklinen. Founded by a husband and wife duo, Rich and Vicky, in 2014, about nine years ago. Brooklinen has everything you need to live your most comfortable life. Upgrade your home with quality products, curated designs that'll leave your guests swooning. Brooklinen has been making <laughs> dream spaces a reality for almost a decade. I could see Jeff saying, hey, you know, those Brooklinen sheets sound pretty nice. Mind if I come over and try them out? I do mine. These are mine. These are mine. <laughs> they have, by the way, they also have an organic collection now, which is really cool. Uh, but the key with Brooklinen is they use the highest quality, long staple cotton that makes such a difference. And it's not just sheets, by the way. They ha In fact, you'll save money if you bundle bed, bath, or both together. We got the sheets, we got the pillowcases, we got the duvet, we got the towels. Oh, I love my Brooklinen towels. Save up to 25% when you're bundling. Wire cutter and good housekeeping both said Brooklinen is outstanding. And it's not just those two. They have over 100,000 five-star customer reviews. 100,000. It truly, Brooklyn truly is the Internet's favorite sheets. One reviewer said, I seem to get that wonderful sleeping temperature very quickly and stay there throughout the night versus with my older cotton sheet sets. Another said, I look forward to going to bed every night, slipping in between those beautiful, buttery smooth, look sateen sheets. Ah, it feels so good. That reviewer's name, Leo Laporte. So, who's that guy? <laughs> who's that guy? <laughs> Best sheets in the world, like butter. Like butter, my friends. But I, that wasn't me. Brooklyn uses only the <laughs> highest quality materials for all of their products. Everything will last and last and last. It's made that way. Shop in store. Yes, there are Brooklyn in stores. Check for one near you. But I think most of us are going to do it online at brooklinen.com. Uh, give yourself the cooling sleep you deserve this hot summer. Use Twig as the offer code $20 off your online purchase of $100 or more, plus free shipping. Brooklinen.com, B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. And don't forget that promo code TWIG. Very important. So they know you saw it here, and you get the $20 off and free shipping. Brooklinen. Thank you, Brooklinen. 
I uh, I slept on them last night, but you know Wednesday sheet change day, so we're gonna have to use some subpar uh, sheet. I'm you gonna have wash to... them the same day. Oh, I could do that, couldn't I? I didn't yeah. even think of that. That's a good. That's idea. what we do. That's what I do. You take them off, wash. Then you only need one set, huh? Yeah. I mean, I have. I have multiple sets of sheets for, you know, when that doesn't work. But well, yeah. it, it does I mean, solve we, the problem of how do you sh- fold a fitted sheet if you don't <laughs> ever have exactly to fold it. Yeah, that's true. It. true. Just put yes. it right back on. <laughs> I need to like why is it that, well, you know, <laughs> why is it there a, a, a Silicon Valley startup to solve that problem? The fitted sheet. I'm sure somebody because has it's and it's failed. not a solvable problem. It's not solvable. <laughs> <laughs> it really isn't. Yeah. Wow. It's, impo- right. it's like fission. <laughs> With fission, we've fission. solved. You mean fusion? Oh, fusion. Sorry. Fusion. Yeah, <laughs> yes. that one. The thing the sun does. <laughs> that one. Can't figure that one out for the life of us. So uh, let's do a Google story. This comes from Paul Thurod. I love it. Paul does not like Google. No. Mark Lukowski leaves Google calls company unstable. He didn't like it either. Uh, former member of the original Microsoft NT team, he left Google 20 years after joining them, he's been there 20 years, writing this. Get ready. Well, actually, he tweeted it. Does that count? Is that writing? Today it does. <laughs> yeah. I have decided to... I'm going to do him in a cranky old man voice. I have decided to step away from my role at Google, where I was a senior director of engineering, responsible for OS and software platform for AR and XR devices. Now, this is where it gets mean. The recent changes in AR leadership and Google's unstable commitment and vision have weighed heavily on my decision. So let's stop there. He's bitter that he can't make his toys that nobody really wants anyway, so Google made a smart decision to get out of AR. (laughs) Moving forward, I'm eager to explore opportunities that allow me to further advance augmented reality technology. In other words, I'm job hunting. Somebody hire this Please give me a job. Uh, And it's intersection with generative AI because that's the hotness. That's the hot thing right now. Throw in some NFTs and and, and Bitcoin, (laughs) fella. Somebody will give you a job out there. He has worked... Okay, this guy may be yep. less this credible. Is, yeah, exactly. He's worked at Google, Facebook, Mambo, VMware, Google, Microsoft, DEC, Vitesse, Color, Data General, and Victor. Wow. Huh. Uh, okay. He was at Google, left Google, came back to Google, so I had that in too. Right. Yeah, he's a grumpy cuss. Okay, but maybe they're... Okay, I'm just looking for anything. Well, so Google has been kind of waffly on their yeah. AR. They're maybe waffly. they're smart yeah. to do it. I mean, maybe I, I'm should, just like if we're gonna. Maybe he should go to Meta because yeah. Meta is finally actually. There are two stories this week. One is Meta. The other is Apple. Both of whom are working hard. They have never released publicly mm-hmm. uh, Chat GPT style products as Microsoft and Google have. Microsoft uh, is working with Meta on the next generation of Llama, or is it Yama? Llama. Llama. It's L L M, so it's just I they've added it some letters to L L M, make it Llama. It's the Llama Two, Llama One leaked out. I don't think it was ever f- officially released by uh, Meta, but uh, yeah, that someone kind of stole it. They got stolen today. Well, are we going to talk about them playing fast and loose with open source licensing? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, go on. You're on. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. Uh, I will, yes, we will. Today, we're introducing the availability of Llama 2 rights, Mr. Meta. There's no, no byline. The next generation of our open source large language model, free for research and commercial use. And Microsoft making sure they have a hand in every AI basket is working with Meta. They are the preferred partner for Llama 2. But if it's it, free, what does it mean to be preferred? Well, the real I think the real issue is, and we were talking about this on Windows Weekly, Richard Campbell's been beating this drum. It's surprisingly expensive to generate these models and then to support them. And they need somebody like Microsoft with very big cloud infrastructure and Azure and, mm-hmm. and lots of NVIDIA processors uh, to do it. So partnering with Microsoft makes, I think, a lot of sense. In fact, here's my question on the free part. Is yeah. this, an, and this is a stupid question, but the, most of mine are, is this an Android-like strategy? Like we're going to undercut everybody else and that's how Llama will um, become a dominant model? 
I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it has to perform, right? Because even with Android, there's people that are so against Android because it doesn't necessarily perform the way I. They're introducing does, an right? open ecosystem for interchangeable AI frameworks. So that sounds interesting. Say again. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can. They are introducing an open ecosystem for interchangeable AI frameworks. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Uh, I think that means there'll be a standard, which would be kind of cool. And having Microsoft uh, involved is interesting. Uh, is this the llama news? This is the llama. We're this still is all. About llama? We're still talking about wake llama. Up, no. Wake up, Stacey. Wake up. No, Stacey. Wake, wake up, Stacey. Hey, I know. hey, up. <laughs> Uh, they are also working for with AWS and Hugging Face, but uh, Azure, it'll be part of the Azure AI model catalog. So that, you know, this is, this Microsoft so, will make money because you'll be paying are, Azure hours for this, Azure minutes. It, this framework sounds less like a standard and more like an app store or something oh, like that. Maybe, like you'll yeah. have interchangeable plug -in models plug -in. that will work. Right. Yeah. Right. Although Google was really promoting that idea, what weren't they of a kind of a plugins and so forth? Uh, Apple has announced, or maybe it's leaked, Apple GPT. <laughs> the headline from The Verge: Apple is testing an AI chatbot, but has no idea what to do with it. <laughs> I, uh, this is this is sure a Bloomberg part report. Of Care part of the genius bar. Of some Apple sort, tests right? Apple GPT develops generative AI tools to catch open AI. Got to catch them all. Um, but you know, I don't know what how this will be released. Um, according to people with knowledge of the efforts, so this is not an announcement. This is Mark Gurman, the Apple rumor guy. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's usually pretty. Who's very tight, good. Tight on this stuff. With that foundation yeah. known as Ajax, Apple has also created a chatbot service that some engineers call Apple GPT. What does GPT stand for, Stacey? Oh, I, I, did, I did look that up just last week. She knows. I, I have off no the idea. top of her head. No, I, generative, I truly do not know. It's a generative. Generative pre training transformer. Oh, there you go. In recent months, the AI push has become a major effort for Apple, says German, with several teams collaborating on the project. I mean, I guess if you're Meta or Apple or, you know, Bob's, you know, shop and drop, you're going to be working on AI because that's the hot thing right yeah. now. Yeah. Why is it pre-training? Pre-training? Yeah, generative pre-training transformer. I get generative, I get transformer. I don't understand the pre-training Maybe they train it halfway, and then they stick That's it in another model. Wrong. It's not pre-training. No. This is very clear, important. Pre-trained. Trained. So pre -trained. the training okay. does is done first, right? That's the key. I'm so It's pre-trained. We pre-trained. It's like pre-chewed Charlies. You go there, they chew the meat, then they spit it in your mouth. It's pre-trained. <laughs> They've chewed oh, yeah. up all of the uh, stuff to make a large it's language model. All as I wrote recently, it's all the cultural cud. It's the cultural Good. cud. See? Good you two are a ruminant. Um, <laughs> Stacy, look. <laughs> we need a new you sticker. Stacy is disgusted. Uh, <laughs> so here's Ew. a picture. Ew. Perhaps this will help if I show you this picture of uh, of something. What is this? It's going into this? Oh, well, now it is all clear. Thank you very much, Leo. You people on audio, you're missing the, the light shining on you. I'm telling you. Come on to video and all will become clear. Well, you see, I will explain it. You see, you have here on the left is scatter plot with a linear support vector machine's decision boundary. That's the size, the stashed line there. And when we move it over, as we move it over, all the white dots go to the left, all the black dots go to the right. We have the segregated vector machine boundary. It's very simple. I don't understand why you don't understand. <laughs> Generative pre-trained transformers are a large language model type and a prominent framework for generative artificial intelligence. First introduced in 2018 by OpenAI, but I guess they don't own the the name. Okay, okay. you pre-train a model so you don't have to put a bunch of data into right. it. Oh my gosh! Right, so you it train just the model. sits there, and that's why. And then you have the model on your phone. It doesn't have to have even have an internet yeah. connection anymore. Okay. It could just do the answers. Oh, okay. to All your right. questions. Well, no, 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 no. That's inference. That's different than training. Oh. 
pre-training, you can do a model that is pre-trained. So you feed it a whole bunch of stuff, you get it pretty good. And then you're going to like tweak it some more. So it's even better. Oh, so oh, then, then, I've actually wondered this for a long time. So if I type into chat GPT, a question it's, it is working on a static model though, right? Yeah. So, but you can pre-train a model with like basic rules. So let's say for chat GPT, you pre-train it to kind of get a sense of what comes next in English or how the English language works. Right. right. So then it can actually generate things. Oh, but there's a English. feedback loop, but it and doesn't need to go out can, on the internet again, does it? I mean, it's, it's got what it needs, doesn't hold on, it? Hold on. Hold on. So you start there and yeah. then <laughs> you take that pre-trained model. <laughs> And then you're going to fine tune it with even more stuff. And I don't know what they're doing for chat GPT to make it even better. This is a very theoretical thing. So now you're going to do it. So you could do like, like Shakespeare, maybe. So it's pre-trained on English, the English language, and then you're going to train it specifically for Shakespeare. So then when someone gives you the prompt, so now that's a model that can do that. And then you've got the prompt. The prompt is what you can put in and eventually the inference is how it's going to generate the response based on the, the prompt that you've asked. Did that make sense? Yeah, and in fact, I asked ChatGPT, it says it works by leveraging its pre-trained <laughs> language understanding and generation capabilities to process and respond to natural language inputs. So it actually has this long eight-step explanation. It starts with training, which is no, what- No, sorry, I asked. <laughs> I had a question. I didn't forget what the heck I my question a, I was. I gave you like a really easy <laughs> answer. Yeah, I'm just. And there were no scatter plots. There's, I'm just, going. Slopes. Keep going. What? Did, I'm yeah, trying. I to... stick my face in front or my hand on my face a lot in this show. I'm just. Yeah, you do. Well, we make you do that, and yeah. it's understandable. Yeah, you're provoked. <laughs> you're provoked. We put yes. you in that position. Um, with this this partnership, here we go. While ChatGPT is pre-trained in a vast data set, it can also be fine-tuned on more specific data sets for particular applications. So that like tailors it like Shakespeare. But it is essential to note ChatGPT does have a knowledge cutoff. In my case, says ChatGPT, it was September 2021. So he doesn't have access to information beyond that date. But you could. You could add. In fact, this well, you is... You can feed in information. This yeah. is a new, uh, and fair, I think, kind of interesting. Financial Times had a article uh, today on how they've run out of stuff. They've run out of cud to chew and they're looking for new ways to get new data into these new models. And I'm a little nervous about what they've, what they've come up with. They call it, um, uh, well, here's the F FT. Oh, Darn you, FT. Gibru and Bender and company would say this is like a boy's BSD problem is they're trying for ever bigger models and that only makes it worse. You run out. It doesn't make it better. Yeah, the internet well, no, is... It's not, no, no, it's not that you run out. It's that they're too big. You don't know what's in them. It's a mess. And there's no need for them to be this big. Here's the FT article. Why computer-made data is being used to train data models, they call it synthetic. Oh, that's just synthetic data. Yeah. yeah, that's just synthetic data. That's So they do synthetic data, not because they've run out of stuff, but because it's cheaper and easier to get. Well, also because they're, they're running out. Synthetic data's been... <laughs> I mean, well, uh, in fact, this is... No, uh, they're synthetic, quoting... no, synthetic data, they don't use it because they're running out of it. Because, like, synthetic data is fake, so you can't use it to train something to be understanding of like how humans are or whatever you use synthetic data because it's cheaper to get here's what uh, aiden gomez who's the ceo of a of a startup cohere that's using this a lot if you could get all the data you needed off the web that would be fantastic in reality the web is so noisy and messy that it's not really representative of the data you want the web just doesn't do everything we need so and sam altman talked about this the uh, founder of uh, open ai he said he's pretty confident that soon all data will be synthetic data. So oh get this. Listen to how they do, they do this. Uh, he, Gomez says synthetic data is already huge, even if it's not broadcast widely. For example, to train a model on advanced mathematics, Cohere, which is one of the, the startup that's doing this, might use two AI models talking to each other. One is the tutor. One is the student. 
Gomez says they're having a conversation about trigonometry. It's all synthetic. It's all just imagined by the model. And then <laughs> the human looks at this conversation, goes in and corrects it if the model said something wrong. That's the status quo today. Two uh, studies from Microsoft Research showed that synthetic data could be used to train models that were smaller and simpler than the current chat GPT-4 or Palm 2. One paper described a synthetic data set of short stories generated by GTP-4, which only contained words that a typical four-year-old might understand. This data set is known as tiny stories. was then used to train a simple LLM that was able to produce fluent and grammatically correct stories. So my concern is it's like mad cow disease, right? Well, okay, so synthetic data isn't just for, I get it. I get what you're saying. Um, it's not just for chaining language, large language models. They use synthetic data for all kinds of things. And in other cases, it works really well. So like they use it to train drones on how to spot faults in pipelines. Instead of sending over drones to take photos of millions of lines of millions of miles of pipelines they just generate what the flaws look like they show that to it uh -huh. they use that to train it instead of so synthetic data is actually highly useful for a lot of situations it could even be useful for teaching some teaching a computer about how a four-year-old speaks because we don't have a lot of examples of four-year-olds right and their language abilities on the computer. But you do have it, you'd have to type you it could out generate or figure it, it out. Yeah, ChatGPT4 right. can generate small words, tiny stories, and then you learn from that. They give as an example uh, hedge funds, which are looking for black swan events. There aren't a lot of black swan events. So what they do is they create 100 black swan, fake black swan events mm -hmm. and then test against that. Uh, he says, for banks where fraud constitutes less than a hundredth of a percent of total data... The software generates thousands of edge case scenarios on fraud and then trains AI models with this, just like your drones searching for uh, pipeline breaks. So, okay, mm -hmm. so that's not so bad. It's, it's learning from right. generated data to simulate the problem you're looking for. So it's if you wanted to create a radiology uh, analysis AI, you, you may not have enough scans to show it to train it on in from the real world so you can create a bunch of <laughs> all, all the weird stuff that people put right, up their butts right. you may not have enough of you that. may not have enough of that mm -hmm. so you create many many more often with an a what's interesting it's often with an ai that's why i probably in a in a inappropriately described it like mad cow disease which mad cows get from eating dead cows <coughs> the uh bovine encephalitis is communicated by eating right. their but, brains. So but this is exactly where Matthew Kirschenbaum goes with his wonderful, I put it in the Discord, <laughs> right place this time, essay, prepare for the text apocalypse in the Atlantic, where uh -huh. he says that, that um, uh, we'll have plain unadorned text, but in quantities so immense as to seem unimaginable, a tsunami of text swept into a self-perpetuating cataract of content that makes it functionally impossible to reliably communicate in any digital setting. Because there's so much what's real, what's, bogus content? So much made up. It's great yeah. goo. Yeah. And then there's a paper I also put in there uh, where, where uh, uh, researchers trained a model on uh, content created by AI models, and in the, in the, they call it the cursive of the recursion. It leads to what they say is model collapse. Yeah, you would. It'd be it, almost it, it like junk here yes, and junk here is, and junk here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we garbage talked in, about that out. months yes. ago. Yeah, we did. Oh, I'm just trying to be relevant this yeah. time. As opposed to the last time I talked. Uh, <laughs> my mind, my mind is going. You, you have been talking about this about. Uh, 12 minutes and that just now made sense to me. <laughs> You're now. welcome, Ant. You're welcome. <laughs> by, the way, by the way, Ant, by the way, I want to, I want to make uh, your, your, your beard's distinguished. It's getting a nice gray I like it. it. Look at that. That's, yeah. that's, that's good. That's always been there. I'm yeah, just, but I know, you didn't I grow it out. I saw the same. It's kind of, it's, it's the right length. It's very good as a, as a white bearded I, uh, so guy. I'm just weathered. I, I welcome you to the club. I, I think eventually Crystal. all the hosts of this show will grow beards. You think so? <laughs> yeah. You think so? It's spreading from Jeff to you. Stacy fears. She fears at the end of every show. She's been here so long. Y'all, I've been tweezing out my beard forever. I mean, my God. I, want, I think I, I, if I could, if my beard would look like that, I, I've been trying to convince Lisa to let me grow a beard. She said, well, don't grow a beard. Why would you want to grow a beard? But I just think as you get older, it kind of hides a multitude of defects and... Um, 
Oh, yeah. I want to oh, look yeah. like jowls. the most interesting It hides man. jowls. jowls. I gotta Thank you. you. And I can't, <laughs> can't say that's why I have a beard, but sure, I get where you come from. No, you from. don't have that problem, but <laughs> some of us. Um, and a little waddle. I want to look like, yeah, waddle, waddle. I want to look like the most interesting man in the world. You know, he said the kind of, like yours, like mm -hmm. kind of a cr closely Just cropped. Groomed. Groomed mm -hmm. beard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. look good. Yeah, well, it looks good. It doesn't hide your face. It looks good. Yeah, thank you. Very smart. Yeah. Speaking of AI, oh, I think we're in our AI segment. I forgot to mention that. Man, where's Mr. Howe? <laughs> where's the Where's the trumpets for this? Where's Mr. There's Howe? no trumpets. It just is. It happens. Uh, you're gonna. Is. This is This is wait, Fox. Wait a minute. Writing about their competitor. Are you in trouble? Geo Media. <laughs> what? You say the name. Lisa's and she coming. Comes Lisa running. came in. Lisa, can you have a beard, please? Can I have a beard? She came running. No. We want oh. every... So see, look at ants. See ants? See how good that looks? So we think the beard is spreading from the left to the right here. So maybe if... Lisa, it, just punch him in the arm for me, please. See, is it too scratchy? Too scratchy. No. Oh, Lisa, you should That's her mind. fear is scratchy. Yeah, no. She has very, yeah. very delicate skin. <laughs> Yes, and she yes. doesn't want a big... But see, I'm scratchy even when I shave. I have to shave like three or four times a day. And do you mind? No. It's so. worth it. What, right. what about beard oil? <laughs> beard oil. Would I that have, help? I have beard? oil on. This still doesn't help. Yeah. It, it, does it get softer it as it gets longer, Jeff? It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Not for me. Yeah. 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 Yours yeah. Is really Not for me. But see, he's... Yeah, he's got a different... I got a different grain of hair. Black grain. folks' hair. He's got his. Yeah. Your curl, it's there is that difference. Yes. There is black folks' whiskers. That's what it is. Is it's it? Different. Yeah, it's tighter. But see, I, I want to look. I want it to look like that. So I guess it's hopeless. Honey, you can get that much brown in your beard if you tried. So uh, Vox, which is, I would imagine, a competitor to Geo Media, right? Yeah, I um, thought so. Geo Media is like yeah, I think the job. Vox would like to think that they're above Geo Media. Yes. Yeah. Vox writes, "You're going to see more AI written articles, whether Your you like cow. it or not. They're talking about Geo, and their uh, CEO Jim Spanfeller, who apparently said, <laughs> "Too bad, it's absolutely a thing we want to do more of." Uh, Meryl Brown, who's the editorial director, there is an old friend of mine. Oh, actually, it was Meryl who said this. Um, uh, yeah. Gizmodo, you, The Onion. No, AI can't write The Onion. No. 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 Jezebel. Not well. Um, Geo Media. You can write The Onion, you know, those those little, like, comments from people being absolutely ridiculous. Right. It might I, even get a little bit more you know, surreal. I wonder if they could. There is, it is, The Onion is almost formulaic, right? Area Man. You start with right. Area Man. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe they could. Maybe they could. Anyway, they they have already published four tor stories entirely generated by AI. The stories, and this again is Vox writing, hmm. which included multiple errors and ran without input from Geo's editors or writers, infuriated Geo staff and generated scorn. Who are or an infuriate, infuriating bunch? They like to be infuriated. There. Well, but but the, also that's their job. The, They're the Gawker uh, ethos brought down in time. Yeah. Wouldn't that be ironic? But I, 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 I agree with them. If Gawker I would were written be by an AI. <laughs> if I worked, like, when I worked at Fortune or GigaOM, if yes. my company started publishing AI-generated stuff without telling people, and it was wrong. It was crap. You're trying That's the to... Thing. If, well, it, if you're going to use this AI stuff, make sure that you're fact-checking and... and have some sort of editor in there that's going to make a it bit of the Star Wars work roundup that, that have mistakes in it. I mean, Jesus. Um, in a note um, set to heat. top editors at his company last Friday, Merrill Brown said editors of Jalopnik and AV Club are planning to create content summaries or lists that will be produced by AI, but that's, that's reasonable. Summaries, reasonable. Summaries I can live with better. That's reasonable. Brown's memo also noted that the Associated Press recently announced a partnership with OpenAI. Money, money, money. Mm. I also think doing it like Jalopnik or uh, I don't know the other site. AV Club. Yeah. AV. Okay. These are the people who read those sites are not casual, right? These are people right. who know their right. stuff. Oh, and I think point. it's a real risk. Yeah. I mean, like just generating a list, sure. But you. Right. You don't. It'd be like if someone like tried to generate. AI content about like IOT stuff. You know what it would be, be like, like? You know, if a if a bot, for instance, tried to generate a chronological list of Star Wars movies and TV shows, <laughs> like talk about a an audience with an investment, right? And got it right. wrong yep. and left out, yep. like left out Andor entirely. 
And well, they've added Andor since, by the way. They've fixed the uh, errors. Did they put a Did they put a disclosure at the end? Yeah, a correction was made to this story. The episode's rankings were incorrect. In particular, the Clone Wars was placed in the correct chronological order in the corrected list. They also added. You know, here's the real problem, Stacy. It's not just that 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 they put something next to you that's wrong. It's they've commodified you as the writer, right? And and and, well, and no, what it says haven't. to everybody they're there. It's they're trying to commodify me and they're totally Bastards. in doing so. And by making it so wrong, they're actually insulting me by thinking that's right. that that's my sole value. That's where right. it's actually the years of expertise that I Absolutely. have. So it's kind of like. But on the other hand, and most of these articles, <laughs> I would guess. Oh, we need we need a sticker for that. Bitch, I'm irreplaceable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a, that's a must sticker. Yes, <laughs> working on it. On it. On He's it. on it. <laughs> Joe's on it. <laughs> uh, there are what these are those these <laughs> listicles. These can because they're really just link bait. They're just search engine yeah. optimized articles that you would type in. Well, what's the chronological, chronological uh, list of uh, Star Wars shows? That's the spicy autocorrect you talk about listicles. Yeah, and it's good at that. Yeah, but except it's not. <laughs> but if it were, it would be good at that. <laughs> if you want to do some, if it only were good at that, that would be great. It's. I mean. And this is an interesting, I think Ed Zitron actually did something with this, but it is replacing the stuff I used to have, you know, we would have interns do, right? Go back and check yes. out all of our Wi-Fi 5 coverage and write an explainer for someone. Or like, That's, basically, it's taking the low value stuff that we use to teach people how to do the jobs that we have today. Isn't that what and CNET that's said? To or Red Ventures, whomever that was. Isn't, isn't well, that what they said as well? Is it, they're trying to take those yes. entry level pieces of content but maybe they shouldn't be doing that entry-level crap content in the first place it's there's, making content for content's sake the canonical <laughs> one is what time is the super bowl and well and, no okay there's what time is the super bowl but there's also things like how do i get a driver's license or think about the sidebars in a comp like right. in the cybersecurity label story like any sidebar that i might have like what, the last five big IoT consumer device IoT hacks. Yep. That's something I would have an intern would pull you, up. Would yep. you use to like, an AI to do this instead of an intern? No, that's. I mean, would I? To, oh my. Um, would I? <laughs> no, because I wouldn't trust it. <laughs> I should say the oh my has nothing to do with what we're talking about. <laughs> it has everything to do with. This. Photoshop's generative AI I, tool. I, is cannot, so good, I cannot man. do. I cannot look at the Discord is, while that being on no, the show. This is a picture somebody has done that is Mr. really Nielsen. not good. Mr. Nielsen of me in a beard. Um, and I bet he it's, used it's the selection good. tool in Photoshop. I think it's probably beta. exactly what I would look like with it, a beard, and it's it exactly why job. I'm not going to grow a beard. <laughs> now that's better. The oh, that's a better, better one. That's a Jeff oh. beard. Yeah, give give me a nice white beard. Yeah. Yeah. I look like Captain Lee on Below Deck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm uh, madder than a pissed off chicken. Good. Um, all right. Whatever. Uh, yeah, where were we? We were. Oh, well, here. So I'll give you another one. Get ready. Open AI. Okay. And I'm sure, Jeff, you might have something to say about this. Has done a deal with the I'll American. I have something to say about everything, Leo. But <laughs> <laughs> has done a deal with the American Journalism Product Project. Oh, yeah. For $5 million to. Help fund efforts by local outlets to experiment with writing AI articles. So they also did a deal with Associated Press, as we mentioned earlier. And this is out of the playbook of Facebook and Google trying to make friends with the media industry before the media industry turns on them and gets regulation. And then um, that's all I'll predict is what's going to happen. So OpenAI is committing for a while. $5 million in funding for local news initiatives uh, through AG. AJP. Now it's not not it's not all cash. Some of it is uh, ChatGPT API yeah. tokens. American uh, Journalism Project is is a fifty million dollar I forget fund um, started by John Thornton, who was uh, uh, co-founder of the Texas Tribune, to try to get. What's, 
They're going. They're going crazy because of the Discord. We can't allow. No, the Discord I don't like John show. Thornton. She no, does not. She, like, you she don't like John, John Thornton. Thornton. I know. I know John Thornton. That. Wow. Okay. Right. She was. I, I never to, talk, I to See, it's facing him. reactions. I can't. Are you? Are you reacting to to your to your bitch? I'm your replaceable uh, <laughs> sticker. Are you reacting to a name I just said? Are you reacting to? <laughs> the hunger for the waffle. I can't. I can't read you, Stacy. I can't is, read you. I thought that was somebody behind me that was so strong and powerful. I was like, where does that sound come from? This, boy, she okay, really so we don't like, like this it. guy. <laughs> I, 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 can, I personally, but I get it. I can understand. Just, it was Texas Tri- he started Texas Tribune. And and and, and he, he and other people also started American Journalism Project, and it's an effort to create basically Texas Tribunes across the country, which would be a good thing. No, As a journalist who had to cover John Thornton, he did not treat journalists well at all. Oh, well, that's okay. funny. There's a revelation, okay. right? Here's the guy who wants AI to start writing these articles. Now, no, this has been a problem in local journalism. Really so we're going to get to cover the city council meetings, the school board meetings. Then um, you go to, you forget AI, you go to a, a startup called City Bureau that is doing brilliant work training citizens to cover these kinds of things, know the limitations of that, and pay them for it. Daryl Holiday, the co-founder, just announced that he's going to move on to something else, which is interesting. City Bureau is a great example of that. It ain't AI. It is empowered citizens. That's how you got to cover that stuff. Well, but what if, I mean, remember we talked last week about how a conversation was recorded, fed to oh, Whisper AI to transcribe, as you might do with a city council meeting, and then fed to chat GPT to summarize. And it did a really good job. Now, I guess you'd still need it or want a human to check it. Mm -hmm. Well, no, Leo, here's the thing. If it's if it's about the sewer plat on Elm Street, okay. But like the school board meeting that I went to, the last one I went to, was about the right wing trying to eliminate a sociology textbook because it was a mean to white people. No AI is going to get the nuance of that, babe. You might yeah. be surprised. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot of content that's, about that running around right now. But that's the thing. <laughs> if, if you're going to use these AIs, go ahead and use them, but still have some sort of, of human involved to, to clean things up and help with corrections and whatnot. An editor. But it's also about going up and asking the right questions. And it's about, it's about more. I mean, I'm, I sound like an old fart defending the, the human journalist. What I'm really saying is, is that is that we in journalism thought our value was in this thing called content. And so a machine comes along that can make unlimited amounts of content. That's not where our value has ever been. Mm -hmm. Our value has been in asking the right questions, in challenging power, in mm -hmm. representing communities, in understanding their needs, in giving them service. That's where the value of journalism is. But we see it in places like Go Media. Now you see it as let's make more content to get more pages with more ads. Yeah, but there's and still that's the, the economic there's still value to the people who exactly. own papers. Yeah, there's still so, a balance yeah. though, because uh, like what Miss Higginbotham was pointing out earlier, I agree. There is still a place for some of those low hanging fruit pieces of you know how do I connect to a Wi-Fi securely, you know stuff like that. that people, some people still don't know. We've already talked about how much people don't. <laughs> no, previously in the show. One of my students in um, in our in our executive program was talking about uh, that from Sweden was talking about evergreen content. Once you've written that yeah. once, yeah, you don't need to write it a hundred times. You just link to it. But people don't want to link to each other because they want their own page with their own content, with their own ads, with yeah. their own traffic, with their own SEO. Yeah, and that's that's the ruin of of journalism. Did yeah, you see? But it's that, also but it's you... also how journalists learn. I mean, the fastest way to get when you like, I mean, I'm sure you tell you, well, you don't teach 101, but in journalism 101, the fastest way. Is 101. Okay. <laughs> is to, to get on a beat is You're start right. doing profiles. Is of to the go to the people. city council meeting, right? And start, start doing well, it from the ground no, up. It's evergreen content. Oh, it's okay. profiles. It's how to's. It's those kind of things. And you do that so you can get. So you can learn mm -hmm. and build the yeah. expertise. And I would argue that the one thing you left off isn't, it isn't knowing what your audience needs or wants, or isn't just that. It's the expertise that you build up over years of covering yes. a place or a topic. Well, and the nose for news, the nose for, I'm at a city council meeting. And oh, that's interesting. The commissioner doesn't want that sewer built. Doesn't he own a store right mm -hmm. next door and right. and then doing a, 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 a an investigative piece on it? That's 
right? You don't get that unless you actually go yeah. out and start doing reporting and go out in the field. And right. maybe that's doing reporting on something that's ostensibly pretty dull. I wish we had local reporters who were going to those things and looking for those stories. Um, but if you're sensible and smart, you're probably not going into journalism anymore, right? Gonzo journalism. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, says, yeah, I'm sensible the and smart. No, but yeah, but you went into it years ago. Oh, but Andrew Today? does tell me that whenever someone, like when teenagers ask me about journalism, I'm like, don't do that. Well, I say that about <laughs> podcasting too and radio oh, and everything oh, I've ever done. Oh, the local. But fortunately, my kids didn't listen to me, so it's okay. The uh, local, uh, um, what do you call them? They do strikes. Reporters. Why? Reporters and, and trellis, a local trellis. No, trellis. why can I think of words? <laughs> Does it have the news organizations? Word for everything. Papers? <laughs> union. That's yeah. it. Blogs? Union with union. Um, Press Democrat and. Are the, they unionized? There's there's something going on. Oh, they, with they are planning to unionize. Yeah. And. See, you know, it's in, all that, about in some ways that's pay good. And contribution. Yeah, and I mean, I support. They want to do this work that you're talking about, but. There hasn't been any pay in it. Right. You know. No, it's five bucks a meeting. There's been a, um, there was some stat that was listed like two or three days ago that talked about how those folks on those staffs are not even really making a living. Actually, wage. I should point out <laughs> in Petaluma, the five bucks a meeting is what the city council members get paid. Literally five wow. bucks a meeting. So they do that, I guess, because, you know, they want to be famous or they want to support the community. Um, you can't expect people to try to make a living doing that. But, you know, I feel sorry for anybody getting started these days. You, I don't, with the price of housing and the the low wages, I don't know how anybody survives. The guys, In this the, economy? The guys Being that cover our high school. Yeah, exactly. I, I love them and, and they're younger guys and I know they're busting their hump, but I feel bad for them from a financial standpoint. Yeah, our 20 year old's started. working in a grocery store making 20 bucks an hour, but he can't, that wouldn't pay. He'd have to have three roommates and I mean. Mm -hmm. That's the norm. Wow. Yeah, I guess I did when I was a kid. Uh, did you see Devendra Hardwar? Who's what did he do? He was putting into a South Park episode, not a real one, a huh, fake really? one. Now I have to say, South Park is probably something an AI could do. <laughs> uh, Good call. This is intro. this is I a. Uh, uh, I was thrust into an episode entirely produced by the showrunner AI model from the simulation, which is uh, the next iteration of the VR studio fable. You want to see a little bit of. Devendra, he said, all it took was some audio of my voice, literally recorded during a call with the simulation CEO, a picture and a two-sentence prompt to produce an entire South Park episode. And while it wasn't the best I've ever seen, I was shocked by how watchable it was, he writes. That's it, all it takes. Dude. Yeah, you want to see a it's little watchable. bit? I, I think I can play this. I don't know. Is this Actually, that's a really interesting question. Does this violate Trey Parker's... <laughs> So here we are. And this is fair use. We're good. Oh, this is them actually doing it with the showrunner system. So they're choosing the South Park characters. The hero is Devendra. They're going to have Randy and Sharon in it. It starts in the living room. And here's the prompt. Devendra, a tech journalist, is going from door to door <laughs> to warn people of the coming AI apocalypse. <laughs> Sharon is annoyed while Randy wants to learn more. And now, we take you to South Park. A cop, a pop, apocalypse now and zen, they call it. Okay. Hello, anyone home? I've got some urgent news. Oh boy, it it's does sound seven in the like... morning. This better be good. It's not just good, it's crucial. Did you know that artificial intelligence is taking over the world? AI, huh? Like in those sci-fi movies? Exactly, Part Mr. of this Marsh. succeeds now, because South Park's animation and voices are intentionally kind of bad, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's part of the aesthetic of it. Mm -hmm. it, does, it is actually, it's pretty much like South Park, right? Roll everything. I wish Here you could see the video for those of you of listening. Spiel. So, Devendra, how exactly do these robots plan to enslave us? Well, they're infiltrating every aspect of our lives. They're in our phones, our cars, even our toasters. Our toasters, really? I always knew that little oh, bastard was something. Oh, <laughs> jeez. Uh, it's just a oy. step above Eliza. All right, all right. Never mind. Just, yeah, it's as bad uh, as the Seinfeld. Yeah. Well, uh, but see, that's the thing. I mean, this goes back to your point. It's Leo. still watchable. It, it, this is still a parlor trick. Yeah. It's, it's. But I have to say, with yeah, the they actors and, things. and the writers out on strike, this may be the parlor trick we get. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, this may be the future. <laughs> Yikes. I think we've said before that there's still time. This stuff can get better. That's my question. My full question is, can it get better? I think, I think it can. That's why yes. this, yes. you think so. You I all think, you all think it, it will. This, God, you, God, you sound like, who was it who was like, it's no learning. one will ever need more than 50 megabytes of storage or whatever. There you go. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's who you sound like. Well, he wasn't far wrong. No, he was, wasn't he? <laughs> um, I, I feel like we've been here before with AI. And it's. I think the most important thing we can do at this point is to see what it's, to use it for the things it's good at, summarizing documents. Uh, we're using surprisingly large amount of AI now in our show production. Yes. For instance, this surprises me. There's an AI we use that goes through each show and picks out clips for highlights. And it, I mean, you're not going to use them all, but it it's, narrows it down, does the edit, and then shows it to the editor. And I'm not sure how it knows that this is a highlight. Maybe people are jumping up and down or something. Voice inflection. It, it could be a lot of different things. It does variables. a good job. Yeah. And uh, Anthony's telling me it does a good job. And then we pick a handful of them, and that's what we use for our promotion. That's a huge amount of time saving. Yep. And if an AI can do that, that's great. So I do think it's there are things it can do, and it's important to know what it can do. But it's also just as important to know some things it's not going to do well and may never do well, like drive a car. <laughs> and, and you really have to know where to – I mean, maybe that's a bad example. But you really have to know where to draw the line. Do you still feel like the that AI will fill the world with um, paper clips? If we no, but it will fill the world with disinformation because of bad humans who are going to set AI to that task and get ready because between now and November 2024, we're going to see it's an a disinformation it's apocalypse. Coming. Yeah. And I think everybody knows that. Even Bill Gates, who just wrote a, he does the Gates notes. He's kind, he's not actually disagreeing very much with what I've said. He's here's uh, here's his latest uh, Gates note: the risks of AI are real but manageable. He compares AI to other breakthroughs. It wasn't long ago he was starting to decree apocalypse, though. So. Really? Well, he's back down. Yeah, I forget I found another one there, but yeah, fine. He says, it's not the first time a major innovation has introduced new threats to be controlled. We've done it before. Whether it was the introduction of cars, the rise of personal computers and the internet, people have managed through other transformative moments and have, have despite a lot of turbulence come out better off in the end. Um, he says, deep fakes, and he's, he says, I've been thinking about the longer term risks. And he says, they should not come at the expense of the more immediate ones. And these are the more immediate risks. Deep fakes and misinformation generated by AI could undermine elections and democracy. Yes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he says, to some degree, he thinks AI can solve that. Two things make me guardedly optimistic. One is that people are capable of learning not to take everything at face value. We've had to do that, right? Let's, and that's a we good gotta, skill. We just got to keep raising awareness. Just on say, that. hey, that's clearly BS. Uh, he says people, you know, for years people fell for scams with somebody posing as a Nigerian prince, but we've learned. Uh, we need to build the same muscles for deep fakes. The other thing that makes me hopeful is that, and I think he may be wrong on this, AI can help identify deep fakes as well as create them. We're starting to learn that AI is not great at finding no, other AI. No, of course not. Yeah. The, 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 the Declaration of Independence is often found as fake is one of the stories in the, in the rundown. Right. AI, he also says, in, and these are the intermediate short-term issues, makes it easier to launch attacks on people and governments. Yeah. He's, uh, you know, it's the same kind of, well, maybe AI can solve that one. AI will take away people's jobs. And you've talked about this, Jeff, and I think you're right. All new technologies do, but they don't take them away without adding new jobs. Exactly. AI, a rough period of transition for people, yes. Yeah, but. yeah. which is not to downplay the fact that coal miners right. are, you know, going to have a hard time going mm -hmm. forward. That's absolutely There's true. not many of them actually left. Left. So well, that's as, as a, uh, right. AI, and this is a good one. This is the, the stochastic parrots issue. AI inherits our biases and makes things up. Short-term issue. Um, he has. He's, there's nothing really genius in any of this. Here's one you might care about. Students won't learn to write because AI will do the work for them. Uh, so the aforementioned Matthew Kirschenbaum just... The Modern Language Association just put out guidelines for this. 
and and they emphasized Matthew Kirschenbaum was on the committee that did that. I was almost going to put it in the rundown, but I thought I would get hooted down for such a thing. Um, so, uh, but it says that writing is a process, not just a product. And that a lot of teaching about it is to get sure. people to do that. So there are useful things to do. Sure. Faculty need support and learning this. They're not against using it, but we don't use it in the obvious ways. Well, and as Dr. Dew, D-E-W, is saying in our uh, Discord, people said students wouldn't learn math because of calculators. Amen, right. Dr. Right. Dr. Dew. Dr. Dew. And I guess to some degree, they don't learn the basics arithmetic, but they certainly still... Well, my argument has been that, that, that what AI can do, one of the things I'm enthusiastic about, is to extend literacy so that if you want help telling your story, and then it's your story, so you're going to care to get it right. You're really going to edit it. But you need to get over a hump of, of communication. People are intimidated by writing. Yeah. So what does Bill Gates say we have to do? He says, I believe there are more reasons than not to be optimistic that we can manage the risks of AI while maximizing their benefits, but we need to move fast. Governments need to build up expertise in AI so they can make informed laws and regulations. Political leaders need to be equipped. Which, let me stay there for a second, if I could, Leo. Yeah. Really interesting. One thing I put in the rundown is, is, is it uh, 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 my senator, the senator from New York, the, the, uh, the uh, Senator Trellis. Um, um, <laughs> Sh Chuck Schumer? Chuck Schumer, thank you very much. Um <laughs> I love before the show Trellis began, is, is be my, I was <laughs> mentioning that. Oh, sorry, I was, it was before the show. It was oh, before sorry, the show folks, this morning. But you know, it's a good running joke. But let me explain how it started. <laughs> I was mentioning that I played Jeopardy with the Amazon Echo every morning, and the and the final Jeopardy was name a crisscross. It was in the category gardens or something. Name a cri oh no, the category was words with Double two legends, L's. Right. Two yeah. L's, right? Name a crisscross lattice work that is used to prop up plants in the garden and i know i knew what that was but i could not come up with the word trellis and uh yeah you came up well, now with trellis right is the fill-in word when you can't so come now up now whenever with, we can't uh, think of something you'll you'll now know that so senator word. trellis yes. is going to um basically hold courses on ai which is a really smart rather than starting with hearings we gotta we gotta well, control this stuff he's acknowledging that they have to learn about it which good. i think is wonderful good i mean who He's holding courses. Who's it? Who's for senators? Senators. for other senators? Who's, who's well, running the courses? Well, that's a good like, question. Well, that's a good question, Aunt. Hi, that's my good, name is Mark Zuckerberg, but you can call me Zach. Yeah. I'd like to tell you about AI <laughs> and smoking. Hi, hi, I'm Sam Altman. I'm going to destroy the world if you don't stop me. Yeah. Hi, hi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we agree. Governments lean to build the expertise, and I think Chuck yeah. Trellis is right. Political leaders will need to be equipped to have informed, <laughs> thoughtful dialogue with their constituents. Oh, isn't that an, a thought? Yeah. They'll also have to decide how much to collaborate with other countries on these issues versus going it, it alone. It builds right on that. In the private sector, AI companies need to pursue their work safely and responsibility, protect privacy. Make sure the models reflect basic human values, minimize bias, spread the benefits to as many people as possible, prevent technology from being used by criminals or terrorists. Yeah, that's fair. Finally, I encourage everyone, you all, to follow developments in AI as much as possible. It's the most transformative innovation any of us will see in our lifetimes. So that answers the question of whether it's a parlor trick. He says no. And a healthy public debate will depend on everyone. Of course he says no. He has no, a whole lot of stock a in a company that's investing heavily in this AI stuff. Oh, yeah, but okay. And a healthy public debate will depend on everyone being knowledgeable about the technology, its benefits, and its risks. The benefits will be massive. And the best reason to believe we can manage the risks is that we have done it before. He liked Clara and the Sun, if that's any help. <laughs> good book. book. Good, good, good book. book. Good that book. was a good book. Uh, by the way, uh, we are, Jeff, you and uh, Jason Howell are working on a new AI show where this will be one of the things that we'll talk about. I love I'm that sure. photo, by the way. Isn't that a nice picture? Did you take that? It is a nice picture. I think you did. Friendly oh, Jason. Yes, I did. I think he did. Uh -huh. <laughs> Jason's AI playground. I, I, I think we weren't able to get you scheduled in for that because of your travel. I, no, because I'm just, the way it worked out when it was scheduled, I already had stuff oh, jammed okay. in. But we do want to get you in that conversation because I want you to. You want oh, to yes. host that show. Well, after the show next after the show next week, when I'm there, I think Jason and I are going to do something. Good. Okay. 
So to, if you mm-hmm. are in the club and you want to input tomorrow at 1 p.m., Jason's, they call it, he's calling it the AI playground because it's not the show yet. It's just a, a conversation about what that show can and will be, which I think is really important. Uh, and it, you know what? I think what Bill Gates says is probably as good yeah. a charter uh, as anything uh, for people. You know, no beef with that. Yeah, you know, to prepare for the the future. Uh, are there any other AI stories in our this week in Ooh, AI? Not really. Hollywood. You know the real the, the oh, fight man, in yeah. the Writers Guild and the actors is about a lot of things, the mini rooms and stuff. But there is this AI component. Writers are worried about it. Actors are worried about it. Studios who have proven themselves to be rapacious uh, cal- capitalists are you know clearly going to look yeah. to whatever they can do to make this stuff cheaper and. Uh, that I means- thought about that because I thought about Shonda Rhimes and just how yeah. big she she's been in the black community and the, the level of She's a showrunner for Abbott Element. What are the no, shows? No, she um she, she did Abbott. Scandal. Scandal, that's right. And yeah. uh Grey's Anatomy. Uh, you know, so murder. Went, something murder. She, mainstream. Mainstream. Then she she's went great. to Netflix and I believe the deal was damn near a hundred million dollars for Bridgerton yeah, and Queen Charlotte and I mean, she's really good at what she does, but it's unfortunate that now she's like, hey, wait a minute, hey, I can't come in here and do this. This She's worth a quarter of a billion, so it's great if she steps up and says, I want to protect the low-paid writers and actors, Yeah, uh, even though I've made, you know, she was, she started a writer, I'm sure, so, yeah. She was an unemployed scriptwriter in Hollywood who had to work as an office administrator, a counselor at a job center, um... But she she worked her way she up in, in Hollywood. Yeah, she, she did. did the work. Yeah, Princess Diaries. She, she worked on. She has made people who bet on her bank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How to get away with murder? That's the one. But, yeah, that's the one you were talking about. I just saw something she did that I thought was really good, but I can't remember what the name of it was. Yeah, I can only think of the Bridgerton and yeah, yeah. Charlotte, all the Netflix Grey's stuff Anatomy. she's been doing is great. Yeah. And scandal. Oh, inventing Anna. I loved it. Oh, yeah, that Anna. was her too. Yeah, that that's was right. So good. It's really good. That was the Anna Delphi. Oh, she did story. Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I said that. Or she was a sh- <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. So she's supporting. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Because she, she's, you know, a producer now. She didn't make her she's, nut, you know. She's but- supporting the writers and the actors. Good for her. Mm-hmm. Good for her. Uh, as am I. Because even though I've made my nut. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have. Mm hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, in my dreams. Uh, oh, this, well, this is another AI story that scares the hell out of me. This is from Forbes. <laughs> that was that was a deep, waffle side. Deep side. Okay, okay. <laughs> Real quick. Turns out they're putting in cameras everywhere, right? The police. Well, for instance. Uh, in uh, Westchester County, up by where you live, near the fancy people, the police have put in cameras on the roads and cameras in the police cars. Uh, 434 stationary cameras, 46 mobile cameras in police cars, scanning license plates and building a database of travel of people moving around. They used this recently to... Bust a drug traveler. It worked. Uh, Searching through a database of 1.6 billion license place records collected over the last two years from locations across New York State, the AI determined this guy's car was on a, was typical drug trafficker driving. Mm -hmm. You know, he was going short stops in a bunch of places. He made nine trips from Massachusetts to different parts of New York following routes to be known to you be used by narcotic That's pushers. That's the key. It's very specific. Yeah, and you know. for conspicuously short stays. So, the Westchester PD pulled him over, searched his car. He was, in fact, a drug trafficker. They but found the question a, there, was there, was there was there probable cause to do thing. so? Well, yeah, wait. Do it. They found 112 grams of crack, a semi-automatic pistol, $34,000 in yeah, cash. Yeah, whatever they found, did they have cause to pull him over? A year later, he pled guilty to drug trafficking, but his lawyer has now uh, said, having found out about this system, the license, the automatic license plate recognition system, his lawyers said 
this is the specter of modern surveillance that the Fourth Amendment must guard against. This is a systematic development and deployment of a vast surveillance network that invades society's reasonable expectation of privacy with no judicial oversight. This type of system operates at the caprice of every author with access to it. So we didn't know about this case. He pled guilty, pled out. Uh, but I think you're exactly right. Who who says this data should be gathered? I mean, how I mean, it's Columbo used? can sit there and look and see the pattern of how people mm -hmm. okay, do crimes, okay. and Columbo so can then is, use that. But this has been an issue for years, um, and the issue there there's two big issues. One, there's how to police, how are the police and law enforcement using this data? Right. So are they using it? Is it stored forever, for example, because it is unequivocal that this data can be used to track people at a personal level and monitor where they go the same way your geolocation data can be used to monitor you yep. from your phone. Right. So if you're driving, if you're not, a which driver, is another right. issue, that but, information is widely collected and sold on not only to law enforcement, right. so they don't have to do a warrant, but to foreign governments like China. Well, so the other issue, and this is a little bit more. So, A, do, what kind of due process things are there around this data and data collection for police officers? The second issue is you're seeing things like HOAS, like HO, what, what does HOAS stand for? Home. You know oh, home, the that. homeowners association. Home yeah, yeah. yeah, homeowners association. They're actually doing this, and they're using it. These are just normal citizens who are deploying this, and then the president of the HOA uses this data to track all oh, yeah. kinds of. I things. have a friend. I didn't know that. Oh Jeez. God, I have a friend yeah. who was constantly getting notes on her door. You're parking in and around. Man, you're parking. You sh this car's been parked here for more than 24 hours. I mean, that was just some busybody watching. Yeah. But imagine if you well, automated it was that. It was yeah, it was Kravitz. Uh, so there are there are a number of companies doing this. The one that uh, Westchester PD uses is Recor R E K O R. Recor has sold its ALPR tech to at least twenty three police departments and local governments across America. And they 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 say the benefit of our system is you can use your already installed cameras. <laughs> the problem so you don't have to install any special cameras. And I remember about two years ago that. City of Petaluma installed cameras on all the poles yeah. all around town. Not speeding cameras. I'm thinking they're probably recording the license plates. Now, it's yeah. great they caught this crack dealer. That's what I was going to say. I'm I'm fine that this this offender was caught because they were in the wrong. But my problem is when they went to pull them over, what was the reasoning? I mean, was he speeding? No, was that's just, the thing. Right. We, we've he's seen not speeding, your speeding, so he's not pattern. breaking that law. That's exactly what Jeff was saying. Is you there know. probable cause? Well, that's an interesting question for the courts. The other issue is... What if it was someone that borrowed my car doing all of right. that stuff and I happen to be driving? Well, also, something right. that's illegal in some states may not be illegal in this state. For instance, the Sacramento County Sheriff's Office in Sacramento, California, where abortion is not illegal, was sharing license plate reader data with states that have banned abortion. Presumably Ouch. trying to track people visiting abortion clinics in California from states where it's illegal. And there are legislators all over the country now that are trying to use this information to prosecute people in their state who have gone to other states for abortions. Uh, so and this is a big ICE issue. And border, Customs and Border oh, yeah. Control also use it to track right. immigrants. So, like, I, I stuck a link in there about my state and talking about what it can and can't do with this and the concerns. But no, this has been a real, like Electronic Frontier Foundation has been really active on this front for probably before the pandemic, but I'm glad, yeah. This isn't really an AI story as much as it's- Well, it is because well, they've got this data and right. now they're using AI to look at this data and look for patterns. Mm -hmm. And that's where it really becomes even more problematic. It's one thing if Columbo is looking at it, I see this car has been going through. The, that's a, one thing. It's another thing if a machine with all, untold biases is looking at this data and saying, you know, well, there's that not is a, a lot of bias uh, that is a Lincoln Continental. And I know that people of color tend to drive that car. So mm -hmm. I think that adds three points to the likelihood that they're selling crack and that kind of thing. Mm. Well, yeah. no, they're 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 not using it quite that. Oh way, yes, they are. Read the article. They're using it to. to they're profile. using it because. 
to profile based on the car? Are they using it yes. because they understand it that this license plate? No, it records not only the license plate, but the make, model, and color of the car. you got to okay. presume they're recording that because the AI wants to use it. They but say are, it's because, oh, what if people change their license plate? But I don't think no. that's the only thing they're checking. No. Okay. Anyway, anyway, that's anyway. a good question. If you were a reporter, you might want to ask them that question. <laughs> Go down to the Westchester County uh, Sheriff's Office and say, dude, <laughs> why do you need to know if it's a rambler? Say that word, dude. Too. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, quickly, change log because... Do we have to? There. <laughs> the There's nothing here. change log. Mr. House is... Fastest yes, one in history. We do. This is, this is the Google show. We spend an hour talking about AI. Oh, we got to talk oh, about nice. Google. Google, okay. Google launches nearby share for Windows and partnering to pre-install. Google confirms related search operator is going away. Oh, that's too bad. I like the related oh, search operator. That's a it, said, it said that the, uh, the, the, the results weren't very good. Danny oh. Sullivan. Is that Danny Wait, Sullivan? Our good friend yeah, Danny Sullivan, who now right. used to be search engine land, now works at Google. What is the they search? Danny said it hasn't really worked well for some time. As in some cases, the information was dated. The related search operator allowed you to type in the Google search box. And Google would return related websites to that URL. Oh, so you'd actually type in a URL and it would give you some other URLs that are related. Oh, okay. Hmm. Anyway, not going to be not going to be around if you use it. Google is testing AI-generated Meet video backgrounds. I'll be using those because we have our Google Meets. I like that. Uh, this is actually a little interesting. Google's Bard is now going to respond to visual prompts. But companies like Google are very concerned about using this for face recognition. If you feed it a face, are we going to have a little? Are we going to have a problem? Ooh, yeah. Are we going to have a problem here? Safeguards. It, yeah, safeguards. Uh, and Google is deleting some old Hangouts photos this week. So get your photos. Google takeout. Yeah. They better not delete that photo of you sitting out in the parking lot. <laughs> enjoying it. Don't worry. It'll be refreshed next sun. week. <laughs> <laughs> and that's your Google change log. Coming up next, it's going to be picks and tips and numbers and all that stuff as we wrap up. This edition of This Week in Google. Stacy Higginbotham, do you have a thing of the week to wrap it up this week? I don't have a thing, but I have a pick. Better yet. Because, yeah, you know, it's summer. I've been reading. So this, I actually pitched this as it's not the ones that we're um, Picked? reading. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not the ones we chose for the book club. But I just finally finished the whole series. And it's, it's really good, y'all. It's kind of a banger of a series. So hmm. um, this the series is, it's by Adrian Tchaikovsky, and it is the, they call it the architecture series, and the first book is called Shards of Earth, and... It's sci-fi, I take it's a, it. It's a sci-fi space opera. I mean, it's summer. What are you going to read on the beach? Right. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to read about the British influencing our speech. You're going to read a space opera. <laughs> Shards of the Earth, Eyes of the Void, Lords of Uncreation, the final yeah, architecture this, series. It was a it was a fun kind of. I mean, I guess it's longish if you like it, but I I liked it. Good space opera. Um, the kind war of a novel concept. is over. Its heroes forgotten until <laughs> one chance discovery. Idris anyway. Elba. Idris Elba has never aged, <laughs> nor slept since they remade him in the war. It's not Elba. Not Elba. Could it's be Elba. Elba. You know what? I, think, I have I mean, to say, if I were reading totally this book, complete. I'd see Idris Elba. Yeah, I would. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, because they totally describe him as this, like, totally put upon, like, jug-headed person. Oh. And I okay. probably would not okay, classify him. This looks good, actually. Uh, just this it's excerpt a, looks really good. I will confess, Miss Stacy. That was my vote initially. Oh. But then I said, oh, no. Oh, look at you. But I said, no, she's been mentioning Ann Likey several times. So. Oh, I feel so bad. I well, do you like vote. space operas? I, I didn't care. I was just going to give it a shot. <laughs> I was just going to give it a shot. That's all. 
I'm like, yeah, I, I, lo- I, I love you, Aunt, for giving it a shot. I think the people have more normal names in this one. Oh, is the names the part of what's what you're struggling with? Aunt, most of the most of the sci-fi struggles. stuff is the names and all of the other terminology that normal folks like myself. You don't should read. Use. I see. <laughs> Sci-fi. I started reading Hyperion, which is widely considered to be a brilliant sci-fi novel, mm-hmm. and it's it's like this is all made up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it came to me. This yeah. is all made up, yeah. and I thought I am not in the mood for made up stuff right now. Mm-hmm. So I started yeah. reading the longest biography in history. Well, I think it is one thousand two hundred forty-six pages long. Son of a. Good I was telling uh, Jeff. Who's, I was telling you about whose this. life is this. A guy you never heard of, Robert Moses. Okay, People I've heard of Robert this, Moses. I love this book. I have. Uh, oh, I have the to Power say, Broker. It's power called broker. the Power oh. Broker, and the Pulitzer yeah. Prize oh winner. God, it's of course everybody. Robert Caro, and it is considered yeah. by many to be the best biography of all time. Really, it is great yeah. because I grew up in New York. So this is the guy who built the Cross Bronx Expressway, Riverside Park. He turned Long Island into a park for the poor tenement dwellers of New York City. Mm -hmm. But he did it (laughs) by raising homes, cutting right through neighborhoods. I mean, it's a fascinating story. And uh, I have to say, I really am enjoying it. It's better than I thought. Maybe because I know that. Um, mm, you know the history. I know that area. I don't actually know the history, so that's the thing. I'm learning the history of an area that I I know pretty well. He uh, he he built 27 billion dollars worth of public works. Uh, Every senator and lobbyist, everybody in Washington D.C. has that book on their shelves. Yeah, because he they knew, haven't all read it. He knew how to do it. Well, it is a, quite a read. It's uh, 65 hours on Audible. Mm. Mm. Oh, no. I'm only about a third of the way in, but uh, which is the equivalent of like reading three normal books. But it's really good. Wow. It's so good. Or I'm one sure. or two sci-fi books. Two. Yeah, Robert this is George like books. reading the whole, the whole <laughs> Nutcracker series Jeez. or the Architecture series or whatever you call it. So the Nutcracker series. <laughs> Nutcracker series. I just caught that. <laughs> Jeff, actually, that's not my pick. I did want to mention real quickly my pick. Which is w i b y dot m e slash surprise. And the reason I say that is you you have to click the link, and every time you do, you'll get a website that's still around that's firmly from the early nineteen nineties, a web point <laughs> one point one web one point oh website. So I'm gonna click the link right now, and I will get a random surprise. Look it. Everything you'd ever want to know about arrowheads. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my. But every time it's different. So that's a good one. Let me click it again. See what else we get. I clicked it and it's overviews of plugs and sockets. <laughs> Actually, I wow. have I've literally been to this the <laughs> Digital Museum of Plugs and yep. Sockets website. I like how it says right as it loads. You asked for it. You asked for it. <laughs> W-I-B-Y dot M-E slash surprise. It's a lot of fun. It is because... <laughs> okay, this is good. There's just some really bad websites out there. <laughs> this is good. Um, but all our websites looked like this in, sure the, did. in the early days. Sure did. So this yeah, is... This I, is built a, I built a website in 1998. I wish it were still around. It was amazing. Did you do it with MySpace? Tell the truth. Nah, Geo Did I do it with Angel Fire? Angel Fire. Geo Cities. Geo Cities. Uh, Thank you. Oh, actually, no. We coded first. it in HTML for my journalism class. Oh, cool. By hand. Because we had to. We had to do it by, by hand. hand at first too. It was a bespoke artisanal. Will. Work. All the tags. <laughs> will will will. <laughs> it's always fun to see what you can get. The simplicity boats. A free boat building. You know what? This is what's kind of fun about this. At first you go, oh, these are so bad. These are all kind of built the by... More innocent times. They're innocent. Normal people. Here's a variety of varieties of goldfish in Japan, the Japanese goldfish catalog. Hi, this is Benito. This is the stuff that Google killed. Google killed this yeah, stuff this because the stuff they, Google they said this is not, <laughs> this is not authoritative. Right. Be careful what you get, because I'm I'm not quite sure what the heck this <laughs> is on my screen. I want that site. <laughs> I don't know what it is. There's a, camera. there's a guy in a bathtub, and there's a woman in a nightgown, and 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 she's 
just thinking, why is this guy in my bathtub? I think. I don't know what's going what on. What the heck happened there? That's a great sight, though. <laughs> don't click whatever you do. I okay. just, I don't know what that is. I mean, he's got a rope and what the? Oh, there's um, a rope. I didn't yeah, see the rope. That's what the <sighs> hell's going on here. Boy, good old internet. Meanwhile, I'm at mythandfantasy.com where unicorn foals prance through the fresh green grasses. Let's try right, Stacy's hungry. All right, all right, all right, all right. Jeff Jarvis, number. <laughs> you blamed it on Stacy. I'm using you. I'm using you, Stacy. <laughs> She's tired. I need to like, pick a I'll, be, I'll be used in this case. That's fine. I thought so. I thought it would be in, in your interest. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm going to go up, the, up, up the, the rundown here to the fact that um, uh, Vox mentioned earlier, uh, which made a big deal of building its own CMS. Oh, this is an interesting got, story. Yes. It's got rid of the CMS and it's going to, what is it going to? WordPress. WordPress. The VIP. And I, I did a, a thread where I went through, I, I installed my first editorial system at the Chicago Tribune on this old folks in 1974. And everybody thought they had to have their own special system with their own special. Well, and that was their secret sauce. Exactly. Because they thought too much of their value was in their content. And whether you have to manage it, we need a system to manage this content. Rather than they're making paragraphs, that's all they were doing. And so again, I got into fights with this in San Francisco. I got I timing the fights between the SII system and the ATEX system were horrendous. When I started EW, I left all of them behind, and my wife set up our Macintosh network, and we we left behind all of that computer junk. And it was and Macintosh became the standard until the came along the internet, and we all needed our special content management systems because we're going to do special things on the internet. And, and, you know, Vox, had, Trey Brundred, who ran product at Vox, was brilliant. And then I'm sure it was a great system. And then Washington Post has its own special system. And everybody built their own damn systems. Well, the worse end, than that, Vox was licensing it. They were, oh, yes. They were, our system is so good. As is the Washington Post. You could yes. buy it and use it for your, we use Drupal for our content management system, which is an old CMS, but we keep it up to date. But WordPress now is al almost half of all the internet. It's yeah. really started yeah, it's to win it all. So, have yeah, you, so you God bless Matt Mullenweg and the, and the open source model. He's been on the show. The day. I love him. Yep. And so that's, that's like, wild. They yeah. must have spent millions on Chorus, which was their proprietary content management system. Uh, maybe they made the millions back with licensing. I don't know. They, they made something, you know, that, and they, they, they did update the paper a lot. It was Bezos putting technology in where they updated it a lot. And they did build some other things like ad systems. And they're now going to bundle that stuff to big clients with WordPress. They still have an ad system. So, yeah. And by yeah. the way, kudos, because this is a scoop for uh, Sarah Fisher and Carrie Flynn. At Who's Axios. a great reporter. Yeah. So good, good job, Fisher and Flynn. Nice. Vox Media. <laughs> After all this time, drops its custom content management system. Aunt Pruitt, you, it, it is up to you to redeem our picks of the week. <laughs> I think I've already done this before, but I've, I said, let me try just to be sure. Uh, my pick of the week Ooh, is... Oh, that's pretty. What is that? This you know I'm me and bags. This is... I'm the same way. Peak yep. Designs um, Camera Cube, but I'm using it as a pouch because I just wanted to pack light some days when I come to the studio. That's your light pack? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's only your got pouch? five lenses. And there's, there's my camera. It's bigger than my biggest purse. My camera's in here, some tools, that's, that's, some vitamins, my glasses. That, that's an Aunt Birkin bag. Headphones. Dude, there's um, something about big guys. They, they like to carry big bags. A couple I don't lenses, know what it but is. This is, Patrick this is Norton small. used to carry the biggest pack pack. Right. This is way smaller than my backpack. Okay, you're right. That's way true. smaller than my backpack. It's all relative. But I, I really love their little camera cube system. It has they make a small, inserts. a medium, and a large. Yeah. So you can, that's there a medium a it looks one. like, right? Yeah, this one is the medium. Yeah. And then I just stuck a camera strap on it because you can use it with the strap. Oh, so this isn't really a backpack. Hand. It's just a no, cube. it's a cube. Oh, it's cube. But you can use it however you want. And for me, this works as a nice little pouch to carry some stuff around if I want to go <laughs> a little bit lighter. And I could take some stuff out. I just packed it full just as an example, but because I mean, I don't really need this in here right now or my microphone in here. Or, you know, I don't really need all of that, but I got plenty of stuff in there and it's, it's And I should combat. point out, you also carry a camp chair with you oh, at all yeah. times. <laughs> so it's it's probably relative, right? That cube isn't all that large. 
<laughs> his aunt getting ready for the show out in the front Can't of the hate on my chair. Offices. That chair is 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 was where it's at. You got. Do you have drive around with that? Do you always have it. Yeah, it's always in the trunk of my car. You don't do the thing where you come out with one hand and go. Whoosh. I have. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I think that was Matthew McConaughey. Have you not? <laughs> famously did that with his camp chair. Have you not? <laughs> I have not. <laughs> but no, that's this. That's just peak design. I love peak I design. Love, I, you yeah. know what? I love them. They used to be a sponsor. I'd love to get them back on. But uh, Hey, all, peak design, all my come gear, on back. Come all on my back. gear come is peak back. design. In fact, I just, I bought, uh, I just bought, and I'm waiting for their latest Kickstarter. Which is a uh, you know a little handle that goes under on your camera. Yeah, um, they they work with the gimbals too. I want to say they didn't they do something with a gimbal. They might. They have this uh, you know thing that they uh, this set that let me, let me just. I'm drawing a blank now. I can't remember squat today. It's been that kind of trellis. Thing. Just call it all a trellis. trellis. It's, it's, a trellis. Design, <laughs> it's a trellis. Peak design trellis. It's quite famous. Let's see. This is what uh, the capture clip, clip. This is what I got. The micro clutch. Uh, that's the last thing I remember seeing. Yeah, I have I have their clutch, and I love their clutch. Actually, I'm waiting for I don't it. And want I always the micro because I always do small. this. I pledged, and I keep forgetting that I'm going to have to get an email where I fill in the survey, or I'm not going to get it. Oh, I always forget that. Come on, man. Come on, man. You got to do better. But yeah, that's that's my pick. And then Good my pick. last one, I wanted to throw this out here because this has just been an interesting day for me for whatever reason. And I know this is first world problem, so I won't get into all the details. But I had to have a reboot this afternoon. And this road, titled by Mr. Yellow Gold himself, uh, our very own Jason Howell. Such a great song. Go check it out. Oh, on you're Spotify. kidding. Yeah. Now that's the name of the album. Is there a song that you... Yeah, this road is the this song. road. Oh, that's the name of the song. Okay, mm -hmm. Jason. Oh, I have to sign up. To play. Oh well. <laughs> well. Oh wait a minute. I have a I have well, a Spotify at least, account. At least we know he minute. won't take us down on YouTube. Wait a minute. I have a Spotify account. Hold on there. I don't pay for it. Oh, incorrect username <laughs> and password. You struggling? Uh oh. I'm in trouble here. Here we go. Let me play a little. Yeah. A little this road as we wind up this edition of our show. <laughs> This is Jason on all the instruments, too, right? Yes. Very nice. Yellow so Gold wow. is the name of his band. So Jason. talented. Very talented. I don't know what, what a he's friend, Jason. doing working for me. but anyway. Just just a good song to just sit back and... That's you singing? Jason. I love it. Wait, have you never heard Jason before? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like it. Well, freaking yeah. Yellow Gold, This Road on the Fever Dreamer album. Our big hit this week. Listen to that. Once upon a time, there was a guy named Jason Howell. Six foot four and a bundle of fun. See, you feel better already. I do. I, I just, I it's summertime. That, so. Aunt Pruitt, catch him, uh, well, here every week, of course, mm -hmm. as uh, one of the hosts of This Week in Google, and he is also our community manager for the club. Get on in there and That's join right. the club. If you're not already a member, seven bucks a month gets you Ant and ad-free versions of all our shows, access bonus to the Discord, content. all the bonus content we do, including shows we don't put out anywhere else, including the AI show when it starts coming out. That's going to be a club only. And you'll know it does a very important thing, which is support this wonderful team we've put together here. That's right. At uh, at the Twit Studios. That's right. Sign up, join the Discord, and hop into the uh, upcoming photo critique, live photo critique. Well, that's coming up. Have some fun. Yeah, August 4th. Take pictures of something that says coffee time to you. Okay. okay? I'll do that. Easy. And uh, twit.tv slash club twit is the address. That's right. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Jarvis is the director of the Townite Center for Entrepreneurial Journalism. I got to go. Craig get that out. Graduate right. School get the plug. of Journalism at the City <laughs> University. Of I got to But more importantly, he is going to be speaking at the fabulous Commonwealth Club. And if you go to bit.ly slash hear Jeff, H-E-A-R-J-E-F-F, -F, you use can use the code oh, what's Jarvis the code? CWC for $10 off. Uh, Jeff is going to be talking about his latest book, The Gutenberg Parenthesis. The title of the talk is The Age of Print and the Internet. Please, if you're in the Bay Area, come see Jeff uh, July 25th, 6 p.m. Pacific. Tuesday. That's this coming Tuesday. If you're not in the Bay Area, you can do it online as well. And with that code, it'll cost you nothing. What's the code again, Jeff? 
Jarvis CWC. Jarvis CWC. CWC Commonwealth, Commonwealth Club. Oh, I get it. CWC. Uh, we well, thank I, you for the plug. I can't go because I'll be doing the security now. But uh, Lisa is going to. But I'll go. forgive you if you plug it on Twit. And I will plug it on Twit, and everybody should go. <laughs> Because uh, it's... I love I love seeing Twig Twit fans at these events. Yeah. It's so great. Yeah, and you know how much you love Jeff and his insights. and so Or hate me and want to come and make fun of me. No <laughs> haters allowed. All right. So, you can uh, make a poster that says Moral Panic. You can, you can just bring oh, it up. Oh, Everybody yes. bring your Do Moral that. Panic. Do that. Or <laughs> bring your stickers and get them autographed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love you. Only uh, for club members. Only. Well, we don't actually, no one has these stickers. Who no one has these? them yet. <laughs> I want, Joe, Joe I want, made them and Mr. Victor them. got them, got Victor them made on them. the vinyl. Uh, Victor has a, a like a sticker maker? Yes, he does. Cricket? <laughs> Mr. Victor is awesome. Uh, yeah. Wow. The Twig Editor. Stacy Higginbotham is at Stacy on IOT.com. She just woke up. Great to see you, Stacy. Her uh, <laughs> podcast, the uh, I O, the Internet of Things podcast, featuring Kevin Toffel, is available at StacyOnIoT.com. Oh, y'all! If you like the cybersecurity label, you should listen to it. One, because you'll learn more about it with my guest this week, and two, he sounds just like Fred Rogers, and it's a delight. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait, and you'll find that in all of the stuff she does, including her free newsletter at Stacy on IoT. Dot com. We do this week in Google every Wednesday, 2 p.m. 2 Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC. If you want to watch live, you can. There's a live stream, audio and video, actually, at live.twit.tv. If you're watching live, chat live in our open to all chat room, irc.twit.tv. Just, you know, go in there with a uh, browser. That's all you need. Although if you have an IRC client, if you really want to rock it old school, you can do that. Uh, after the fact, on-demand versions of the show available at twit.tv slash twig. You can also uh, get shows on the dedicated YouTube channel, youtube.com slash this week in Google. Or, best thing to do of all, subscribe in your favorite podcast player. And that way you'll get it automatically the minute it is available. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. I hope you come back next week for Aunt Stacy, Jeff, and some old guy falling asleep in a chair. And I hope y'all tell some other folks about the show, too. Just remember, it's Trellis. Trellis. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> hey, we should talk Linux. It's the operating system that runs the internet, but your game consoles, cell phones, and maybe even the machine on your desk. But you already knew all that. What you may not know is that TwitNow is a show dedicated to it, the Untitled Linux Show. Whether you're a Linux pro a burgeoning sysadmin, man, or just curious what the big deal is, you should join us on the Club Twit Discord every Saturday afternoon for news, analysis, and tips to sharpen your Linux skills. And then make sure you subscribe to the Club Twit exclusive Untitled Linux Show. Wait, you're not a Club Twit member yet? Well, go to twit.tv slash club twit and sign up. Hope to see you there.